again. I'm back at it again, man. Listen, we got a lot to discuss tonight. We're going to be talking about the Jets, some moves that they've made, uh, you know, re-signing, bringing back Aston Davis. We're going to be talking about the draft. We're going to be talking about a lot of things tonight. Call in 515-602-9639. Again, 515-602-9639 is the number. We're going to be taking calls. Give me one second, folks, to connect the audio. Hold on. Love Talk Radio. What's going on, folks? It's your boy Long Beach Joe, and I am back at it, back at it, back at it again. <laughs> I'm back at it again, man. Boy, oh boy, are we excited to be back. It seems Blog Talk is actually working this week, right? I'm shocked. Blog Talk, you failed us last week. You absolutely failed us. Come on. (laughs) We'll get back to bashing Blog Talk, okay? I want to start off early with that. We got quite a bit to discuss tonight. We're going to be talking about the Jets bringing back Ashton Davis, of course. We're going to be talking about the draft as well and the way that I look at uh, some of the things that the Jets could do. I've, I've started to think about some things, man. There's some opportunities for the Jets to trade down, gain capital, and get a player that I want to I want to discuss tonight and highlight. I also want to talk about the state of the AFC East. Uh, since our last show, the Bills have moved on from Stephon Diggs. Mm. The Bills have moved on from Stephon Diggs, right? So uh, we're going to be talking about the AFC East as well and where the Jets stand. We're going to have that discussion tonight, okay? Trust me. We're going to get to the lines as well quickly. Don't worry. 973, I see you. Other callers as well. Hold on just a second. It's going to be really quick. But uh, we're going to have quite a discussion tonight. You know, a lot of trade options in the draft. Trading up. People want to move up for Alt and various other people, and we'll have that discussion. But before I get to talking, because I can get really get going, let me get the show started. Listen. I am the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me show you promote my Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, search The Long Beach Joe Show. Like that page. My content's up there. Go ahead and give it a listen. Message me. I'll message you right back. I love going back and forth with you folks about this football team. Also, leave me some feedback. I love hearing about what you folks think I do here on The Long Beach Joe Show. All right. I'm also, okay, on iTunes as well. Go on over to iTunes. Type in The Long Beach Joe Show, Okay. And uh, subscribe to the podcast, man. You know, I get a lot of people that go over there. They check it out and they say, oh, well, what's going on? All right. All right. I like what I'm seeing. Also, leave me a five star rating. OK. And uh, leave me some feedback. Again, I want to thank everybody that listens to your boy from overseas. That overseas audience, those of you in Germany, Scotland, some people hit me up from the UK. Salutes and respect to you. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, but I, I want to make this clear. OK. <laughs> I absolutely love and respect everyone that listens to me, okay? Whether you're in the UK or whether whether you're overseas or whether you're in the States, it, you know, look, we're all Jets fans or we all love football or maybe you just love the show, you know? Listen, I appreciate every single one of you, okay? But my uh, my overseas guys, they be, they, or overseas girls and guys, they go crazy, you know? So I want to thank that. Thank you all for that because it's always shocking to me to hear someone so far away from me say, hey, Joe, we listen to you. And, uh, you know, we like the takes. Some people say, Joe, I love the takes. Some people say, Joe, I got a bone to pick with you. And I listen. I listen, okay? And we go back and forth and we have that discussion. So salutes to everybody. Again, iTunes, The Long Beach Joe Show. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. And also leave your boy some feedback and a five-star rating. Helps the show get out there, all right? I'm also on Twitter as well. Going over to Twitter, type in at... The Long Beach Joe at the Long Beach Joe on Twitter. Okay. And uh follow your boy. I'll follow you right back and we can have those discussions. I argue with people a lot 
on Twitter, okay? Or on social media, period. I try not to, but it's just, there's a lot of gesture hands that want to argue, and I'm, I'm here to, you know, as long as it's a respectful discussion, I'm here. But, uh, you know, they want to have that discussion or that argument, and I'm here to have it. I've been back and forth with the Bowers boys. I, I Look, I've, I've fought many wars. <laughs> many, many wars, okay? Uh, so I go back and forth with people. So come on over again at the Longview Joe on Twitter. Um, follow me. Let's go back and have that discussion. Now, for those of you that may not know, okay, because some people just check out the podcast on iTunes or Blog Talk. Again, Blog Talk Radio, uh, dot, I think, dot com backslash Longview Joe Show. Some people don't know that your boy is live on YouTube as well. Yes, we film the show live, okay? Live. The YouTube that you can check everything out on is Long Beach Joe Jets, okay? Long Beach Joe Jets on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so when I post content, you will be in the know, all right? Also, uh, listen, some people, when they come on by, they don't know. They say, Joe, hey, we just kind of bumped into the situation. We didn't know that you did this here live. We have so much fun, and I always warn them. You know what I'm saying? When you come over here, be aware. You're going to have to deal with some people. It's my chat, man, and I'll call my chat the savages. You want to know why? Because they're savage. Savage! Listen, man, nobody's safe. Not even me. If they don't like your take, if they don't like what you bring into the table, they're going to let you know about it. Trust me. They're going to let you know, and they are not shy. Okay, so be careful. You know, you got strong opinions. You know, be ready to to defend those opinions, okay? Because they going to definitely speak to you about it, all right? So, with all of that said, now it's time to get into it again. Callers, I see you. I'll be coming to you in a second, okay? Omar, I see you in the building. Rusty, okay? I'll come to you guys in a second. All my new callers as well. Again, 515-602-9639 is the number. When you call in, be patient. I can physically see you, okay? I will come to you in a second. We're just going to cover these recent topics, all right? And again, salutes to all the savages in the chat. Michael, I see you in the building, all right? Put your thoughts in the chat, okay? I will come to y'all, but just trust I'm one man, okay? I'm one man. I'll come to y'all in between calls, and we'll read your thoughts and opinions and questions as well. So put that in the chat as well, savages. So so I want to start off by talking about the New York Jets uh, re-signing a player. The New York Jets have re-signed Ashton Davis. You know what? I'm feeling this. All right. All right. Let's go. Yes. Now, to this point, right, the contract uh, situation has not been divulged, uh, at least publicly. I haven't seen, you know, what it's looking like. But it, more than likely, I'm guessing it's a one-year deal at this point, right? But nonetheless, Ashton Davis, is he's back. He's going to be, uh, you know, playing for, this, playing for the New York Jets this upcoming season. And this was something that kind of shocked me a little bit initially because I remember that the a lot of the hubbub that was going around was that the Jets were going to move on from Ashton Davis and that this was, you know, pretty much kind of a done deal, that he wasn't really a priority to them, that he wasn't a guy that they looked, you know, to immediately grab and bring back. And especially as the New York Jets were making their signings and things were happening, you know, he just kind of kind of fell to the wayside in a lot of people's minds. And there was also some things swirling about, you know, other teams possibly looking uh, to bring him in as well. But as free agency just continued to play it out, you know, he didn't go anywhere. You know, there was no other signing, you know, with him and another team. And then, bang, comes across Ashton Davis is resigning with the Jets. Now, the thing about Ashton, man, is we know he's been very up and down since the New York Jets have drafted him, right? There were some seasons where he, you know, wasn't very impressive. I remember there was an injury that sidelined him for a little bit of time. And I remember that, you know, before coming into this last season, there was a lot of talk amongst Jets fans that he was probably going to be a guy to get cut. He was a cut candidate. I remember that like it was yesterday, especially when the Jets brought in Amos and Chuck Clark and, you know, so all, all these things were playing into the situation. But this past season, he actually played, you know, pretty solidly. He showed that he was a guy that could step in and be a solid depth piece for the Jets there at that safety position. You know, he gave us a lot. 37 tackles last season, 
Uh, one forced fumble, three fumble returns. He also had three picks. You know, I think he, he had an interception in that Chiefs game as well. Uh, picked off Mahomes. So he was a guy that definitely, you know, showed us a little something. But one of the things that he really shined at and on was the special teams situation. He was playing quite a bit of special teams, and a lot of people don't talk about that at all. So here we get a guy that not only can help us, right, in our safety situation with our depth, but he's also a guy that can contribute to the New York Jets on special teams. So now I look at the New York Jets safety position, and I'm saying to myself, all right, you know, we got some depth in here, but I'm, I'm still concerned a little bit. Let me explain to you why. Tony Adams, good player, right? Undrafted guy that's really put things together. Looks really good for us. I think he's going to be solid. He's a guy that's continued to show that he's going to do whatever it takes to get to the next step and get better and get to that next level. So I like Tony Adams here at Free Safety. Chuck Clark, again, he's been resigned. He's brought back into the building. He broke our hearts last offseason. I'm sure every Jets fan remembers that when Joe Douglas was able to grab him, bring him in, and then he absolutely uh, he tore his ACL uh, last offseason. And that hurt because he was a guy that could do it all at the safety position, right? He can play free safety, he can play strong safety. He's a guy that brings just brings the lumber. He's not going to play around. He knows what to do. He's solid in coverage. So bringing him back into the situation is nice, but I'm wondering this ACL situation, how is he going to look coming off of the ACL injury? There's also a lot of questions about when he's going to be able to like get back on the field, right? A lot of talk that he's probably not going to be ready until the start of next season. So you got to wonder, you know, how's that going to play into things? How is he going to look when he gets off, you know, uh, of, of, you know, dealing with that ACL situation? So that's my big question mark. And, of course, the Jets have Jarek Bernard Converse as well, a guy that recently got drafted. We're definitely going to see him, uh, you know, be put into the situation in the rotation and takes his staffs. Hopefully he's been able to take the next step. So I'm looking to see if the Jets continue to address the safety position. Again, I've been a big lobbyist for – Justin Simmons, I don't know if that's going to happen, but to this point, uh, from what I know, I believe he's still out there. A lot of talk about Eddie Jackson and also Micah Hyde as well is a guy that's out there too that I think is a, a very interesting you know, candidate to, to be a Jet. So we'll see what they do. But Justin, or excuse me, Ashton Davis <clears throat> is back in the building. So he's been resigned. Also, I want to talk a little bit tonight about Troy Fontanu, okay? I have this idea to trade down, okay, from 10 until like the mid round or mid first round, that 14, 15, you know, 15 to like 17 range and draft Troy Fontanu from the Washington Huskies, okay? First off, he's a guy from the Pac-12, so of course I watch him, all right? L let me be clear. This is USC fight on, okay? But this is a guy that definitely has a lot of potential here. Right. One thing that I love, I think the most about him is his versatility. The fact that this guy not only has experience at tackle, but also guard. And when you look at the New York Jets, right, our offensive line, right, we got Morgan Moses in the building. Great. OK, we got, uh, you know, Smith in the building as well. Tyron Smith. That's wonderful. But both of those guys, you know, are one year deal kind of guys. Tyron Smith is literally on a one year deal. Then we got Morgan Moses on the last year of his deal. So to this point, it looks like he's a one-year deal guy. And then you also got the injury history. Okay. The big injury injury uh, risk here, right? Especially with Tyron Smith, Tyron Smith. I, I They're just, and again, savages, I'm going to come to the college. I, I just cannot see Tyron playing a full healthy season here with the New York Jets. I foresee that he's going to miss some time. I, I'm just saying it. That's just what I foresee. That's just how I feel. I feel like he's going to miss some games. And so when I look at this situation, I say to myself, right, why not grab a guy that can come in here, be versatile, if we need him to step in, right, he's going to be able to do that. And he's also a guy that we can get ready to move on with in the future. Now, I just talked about the tackle position, right? Morgan Moses, he's got a little bit of an injury history as well, but you definitely look at Tyron Smith. But what about a guy like Elijah Vera Tucker? Nobody's talking about him either. Um, as much as I love AVT, and everybody knows that I do, he's a Trojan, okay? Y'all see when he's out there, he's dominating, okay? And he'll be back this season, and I'm excited because I know he's going to go out there and do his thing, again, fight on. 
My thing is he ain't been fully healthy in two years, right? He spent significant time on the IR with two big injuries two years in a row. That's one of the things that's going to be very big to see is that if he can play a full healthy season for the New York Jets this upcoming season, it's going to go a long way. So I'm saying to myself, maybe we have some guard issues as well. Well, Fontano can go play that too. So I really like the idea of getting this kid, bringing him into the building. I don't mean to say kid, you know, young man, <laughs> bringing him into this building and uh, utilizing his versatility and his skill set. And he's a really good player too. Let me tell you something. He's nasty, man. He gets his hands on you. You're going to have a long day, okay? And, I mean, he can move. And one of the things that I really like about him as well is his ability to move, man. He, like, he can really go. He's got some hustle to him, and he gets after it, all right? He's a guy, I'm telling you, he pulls, he can go. He's got it, man. He really has got it. So his lateral quickness is just, it's, it's crazy for a man his size, right? So I really like that, and he's done a lot of great things, and I think that that would be a good move for the New York Jets. So I want to hear from y'all tonight about this as well. I do have some concerns if we trade down. We know that New Orleans is probably looking for some offensive line help, and the Raiders are probably looking for some offensive line help. But uh, I'm looking at, at Troy Fontana, and I'm saying to myself, hey, that's a guy that I think could be a candidate to be a New York Jet, especially if the Jets move down. Heck, there's people starting to talk about you know Fontana being a top-10 pick. If you think I'm lying, you can go look this up. There are draft guys that are starting to talk about that. So we're going to get to it, man. We're going to get to this. Also, we're going to talk a little bit about the AFC East as well and what's going on there. So let me get to the callers, man, because I want to start talking to y'all. I can talk all night. Salutes to all the savages in the chat, okay? Salutes to all the savages in the chat, all right? We'll come to y'all in just a second. Listen. Please give the stream a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so when I post content, you folks will be in the know. Also, okay, if you want to give to the channel, the super chat is there. Cash app is at the bottom of the screen. Anything you give to the platform is greatly appreciated. Also, keep in mind when you call in, please make sure you have a good phone line. Don't call in, okay, when you're on your jackhammer. Put the jackhammer down, go down the street, and talk to your boy, all right? Don't call me from a phone that you found in a Home Depot dumpster, okay? And for those of y'all that are new, the only rule that I have on my show, pretty much, is do not curse, okay? Don't curse on my show, because that gets you out of here fast. I'm talking fast, all right? <laughs> Faster than we got Jamal Adams out of here. Oh! <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> Did y'all see that man on Twitter start to try to beg, like basically beg people to try to back him coming back to the New York Jets? Oh, I would love to see us. I, I would love to come back and help us in that, you know, playoff drought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, man. <laughs> Whatever, dude. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to hear that. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is a number. Call in. We're taking all callers. Hey, Omar, we just lost Omar. I was going to go to Omar. Omar, call back in. Uh, we'll get to you. First caller we're going to go to, though. We're going to go to Rusty. Rusty, we're coming directly to you. 845-813-609. All the callers, I see y'all. I will come to y'all in a second. We've got to have this discussion. Listen, for those of you that do not know, okay, this man, Rusty, he's a savage. Savage! Salute, Joe, and salute, fellow savages. What's going on, Rusty? <laughs> Listen, man, we having this discussion tonight, and I want to talk to you about it. The first thing I want to start off with you uh, about, though, is Ashton Davis. He's back in the building. Give me your thoughts about the New York Jets re-signing Ashton Davis, man. How do you feel about it? I'm I'm cool with it as long as he doesn't start. You know, honestly, like I, I like him. He's he's awesome for us on special teams. I I think he's ranked what top top five or something like that on all special teams players in the nfl and then i think he's inside the top three uh all special teams too with some kind of other stuff but he's he's awesome for special teams and uh he's, he's getting a lot better than when he first started with us that's for sure i'm just you know i like to see the other guys starting in there and you know plug and play him in and stuff like that don't make him you know, Mr. 100% reliable in that thing because mm -hmm. safety was definitely needed. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, JD definitely, you know, got the emodium, you know, so it was good. I, I like, I like when I'm, uh, called out on that one by, especially by JD. So it's good. Yeah. So when you look at the situation now, right, at our safety position with Ashton Davis into the building, do you think the Jets will stop there or do you want to see them go out and get another safety? Is there a guy that you maybe have in mind in free agency? Uh, not in free agency. Definitely in the draft, though. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, maybe later rounds or hopefully, like, I pray to God, you know, that we trade back, man. Like, mm-hmm. I really do. And I'm one of those guys I hope we can actually do it twice somehow in the first, mm-hmm. you know, while still staying in the first and grab somebody. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I'm a big, big fan of uh, that kid Cole Bishop uh, from Utah. Okay, I like him. He's smart. He's a ball hawk. And uh, he can lay the wood. And then a couple of other guys. What's his name? Uh, Jaden Jaden Hicks, or I think. I think mm-hmm. that's his name is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the out of Washington State. Wow. Uh-huh. That kid. That kid brings it too. So, and then there's a couple other ones, but uh, I'm all I'm all up for you know, grooming a safety because apparently you know we can do that. Yeah. So we can't do is groom quarterbacks, but you know <laughs> we'll just buy them. <laughs> well look, we'll we'll figure that out in the future of course we got a rod yeah. in the building now you talked about trading down and that's really where i want to go next with you because i've been going back and forth with a lot of people everyone knows i'm a big uh proponent of grabbing some offensive linemen in this upcoming draft but um the idea of trading down gaining some capital especially if you can get a second rounder or something that you can pair with maybe a third round or a fourth round pick to move back up to the second round I think becomes very intriguing for me. Now, a guy that I'd like to see the New York Jets target is Troy Fontanu from Washington. But you talked about trading down, right? So where exactly would you like to yep. see? Because you said twice, and I, I know we, we're going to have this discussion. Correct. But where exactly are you looking to trade down from 10 down to? Like, where are you trying to go? Well, I just felt that there's going to be some kind of another thing on a quarterback or I don't know, and sort of beat either the Raiders, hopefully, with mm-hmm. their number 12 pick into getting some things, or maybe even Denver, move up to 12 or move down to 12. Sorry about that. Mm-hmm. And then possibly make a deal with uh, the Rams. They always like trading, and they just throw all their picks. Or the, uh, the highest I would go would be like Dallas or something like that. At what, 25, I think they are? Oh, so you're willing to move down from 10 to 25? Yeah, yeah. I mean, wow, okay. there is some really good kids for offensive tackle, well, offensive line and stuff like that. And in the first, there's probably going to be seven of them gone. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's you, you're going to have to grab, but, you know, that, you're going to have to grab one in the first, absolutely. And then uh, so, wait, hold, hold on, hold have on. them sit behind the guys. Yeah, hold on a second. Because I, yeah. I, I, this is very intriguing. So you're moving down from 10 – to you're saying let's say 13 right where you're talking about with the Raiders what kind of compensation are you looking to get like what's what's the minimum amount of compensation that you would look to gain moving down from 10 to 13 depending on what they're doing I would definitely like to grab a third round or if you know it's some kind of quarterback and that they know that someone's going to jump them you know bait the hook and make them you know rush in and throw more at there and grab a second round that would be beautiful Ooh. You know, instead of having to combine picks to jump back into the second sort of deal. You know what I mean? That's why I was sort of looking to trade back twice. Okay, so you're going down from 13. Like 19 with the Rams. Okay, so you're going down, let, let's say, because I, I think a maybe a fourth rounder, maybe a third rounder, you might get that. So you're moving down from 13 mm-hmm. to, you said, 25, right? That's what you said earlier. So at what the, exa- At the most. At the most, okay. At the most. So let's say you, you're yeah. going down to 25. Who exactly, like, what exactly do you think we can get from going down 13 to 25? I think that we could probably get somewhere either a late second, hopefully, or definitely grab a third, a third and a fourth in there. Maybe okay. we'll sprinkle in a sixth. Because there's going to be people jumping all over the place for different types of wide receivers and stuff like that mm-hmm. to where I like the wide receivers in the, you know, the second, third, and even fourth round in mm-hmm. McCaffrey. Mm-hmm. You know, I like uh, Leggett. I like Devonte. Uh, what's not Devonte Walker? Is it Devonte Walker? I know. It's I know Troy Franklin. Went, Troy Franklin uh, is is, and he's. I think he's visiting with the Jets. So we got some guys that's going to be visiting 
uh, with the Jets uh, very soon. I think he either had a visit or has one coming up soon. But Troy Franklin from Oregon, I know a lot of people are talking about him. 6'2", he can move. But, yeah, you know, there's there's some guys at the yeah. top of that second, like you said, those wide receivers that are very intriguing. But I, w- I want to stick with this first round with you because we're talking about gaining capital. So you're moving down from 13 to 25. Yep. You're gaining probably maybe a third, third and a fourth or something like that. So at 25, who are you targeting? Yeah. Who's your target there at that point? My target is, I mean, if we're going left tackles or something like that, I, I like Jordan Morgan. Mm-hmm. A lot of people okay. sleeping on him. And then, but either him or Graham Barton. Graham Barton can play all three, well, basically all five positions, right tackle, left uh, left tackle, right guard, left guard, and center. Mm-hmm. The guy can literally play it all. What, what about a... What about, I really think Jordan Morgan's going to be a really solid left tackle. Okay. Let's say Jordan Morgan is not there. What about a guy like or, – or Barton? Let's say they're gone. What about a guy like Tyler Guyton? What are your thoughts about him? There's a lot of people that like him and mm-hmm. like what he brings to the table. That dude is massive. I think he's like 6'8". Six, 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 I think he is like 6'8 or 6'9, something like that. He yeah, he's a big massive dude. dude. He's a big he dude. A lot of people talk about him. What are your thoughts about him, man? I mean, like – I just don't trust our field, and then how we've been having like behemoth mana. You know, I love Beckton. Think that he's, you know, hopefully we might actually get him back. Yeah, and he's we still have out to there. About that and just keep him as depth. Mm-hmm. But it just worries me in that sense. To where you know, so a lot of those guys' legs they go. You mm-hmm. know, especially with a horrible turf, and then you have linemen and other types of guys falling back and you know taking out knees and. Things like that, and we were already thin that line. Even though it looks good right now on paper, we have a lot, like a lot of guys that are on one-year, two-year contracts. Guys that got injured, you know, no fault of their own, mm-hmm. has to do with our field and just, you know, the unlucky draw in hand that we've had at O line for the past what, like five years. Yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah, no. So, listen, I hear you. Four- I'm hoping. I'm hoping that they figure out the you know the deal with that field. We all know we all talk about wanting grass. I don't know if Woody's ever going to do it, but man, that they they definitely need to put some grass down, dude. Jerk. Yeah, I don't, I don't really, yeah, listen. I've already got enough smoke on my plate. All right, because I want to go somewhere else. I've been battling with the Bowers boys like none other. Okay, and I don't try, look. I don't. I don't I want you. the problems, Rusty. I don't. They bring them to my doorstep. So it's like if you're gonna bring it to my oh, doorstep, good. I'm gonna open the door <laughs> and, and come out and meet oh, you. Oh yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely, kick them off the front porch. Yeah, go and get. Yeah, I'm, like, like, I'm the same way. I can't stand those Bowers boys. Yeah, like you, you keep <laughs> knocking on my door. Now, my, so my question for you, Rusty, is what do you say to people that believe that taking an offensive lineman in this upcoming draft is idiotic because? That offensive lineman, whether it be a tackle or guard, more than likely is not going to be a starter. And that you need an impact player, a weapon today. What do you say to people that think that? They got to put that pipe down and quit smoking whatever <laughs> that is that's in it. Because they're, they're, they're not watching college football. And then they like to say this stuff. And then all of a sudden when the season comes around, week five and something happens, they're like, oh. And then they, they don't even realize that Bowers isn't even – like, the, I don't know. They go by, like, all these weird Madden spreadsheets. When you actually watch college football, he's not the true best tight end. And they're trying to call him, a, like, a general, uh, a generational tight end. He isn't. Newsflash, just to let you know, he really isn't. Mm. Lackey, that kid from Iowa, he's ten times better, and he's coming out in next year's draft. So when we should draft, draft a tight end. Mm. And then, you know, he's not even the best guy on his team on Georgia. What's his name? Uh, Olgan? or whatever the other tight end is, he's better. He's a true tight end. Bauer, the Bauer boy, he, B-O-I, by the way, <laughs> that Bauer boy, he ain't, <laughs> he, he isn't even a true tight end. You know, he, okay. he really isn't. Listen. So, yeah, those, I'm just, those bulldogs, I'm, you know, they be fronting. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Listen, I'm an SC guy. <laughs> I don't want no smoke with the bulldog boys. Uh, look, I'm just saying. I do. I, I, okay. I have no problem with it. I'm oh, gonna be okay. Ohio State. I'll smack him around. Okay, These listen, guys, those you know, those those, those boys from the Big O, they want problems with you. Send that to Rusty. 
I already have enough problems with y'all at my doorstep <laughs> as is. Just I just want a lineman. That's all I'm saying at this point. So listen, Rusty. Same here. Before I, I yeah, look, I hear you. Before I let you go, man, because we're having this back and I'd forth. I'd like to grab a BB too. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about about doing that. Now we looking at this situation, right? And I'm saying to myself, okay, if the Jets were to you know, get that second round pick, right? Or we package some picks to move back up into the second round. Let's say we address offensive line in the first. What are you looking at in the second? Are you, are because you just said, hey, you're looking to grab another offensive lineman. Are you going wide receiver? Yep. Is there somewhere else that you're going? Like, what exactly are you doing there? I'm going right back to the wall inside the trenches to grab me another fatty. I, I'd really, really want to, I, I hope we get BB. Because mm. then you can plug and play him anywhere too, as well. Mm. And he's a freaking maniac. Okay. okay. So, or what is his name, Zach Zinter, mm. or one of those types of guys, or even later on, get like a Van Fran, because mm. you don't know what you know. Because you could always move Pittman around too. Yeah. So mm. we do have options, and if you if we get like our mammoth up there, because our field unfortunately is probably going to claim, like it always does. Yeah. So and you got to protect Rogers. So if we can grab one of those guys and not have them play week one, mm -hmm. but instead, you know, jump in and hopefully, you know, week 10 and then come back out and, you know, week 13 or something like that and have one of our guys back. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they have something under their belt and we can just hit it home for the playoffs and, you know, God willing, Super Bowl. Same thing with playoffs, I should say, as well. Mm -hmm. And just keep that moving because we need a line, man. Yeah. Like, honestly, and people just like to brush that over. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important thing. Look how our defense is just with our front, you know? Yep. That makes everything else better. Imagine yep. if we had a solid offensive line with backups. It would be incredible. Yeah. You're not passing go and you're not collecting $500 anymore. Absolutely. You know? Listen. You're going straight to jail and Jets are going to smother you. Listen, that, that's, that's my big thing. Now, before I let you go, Rusty, you got the Bills getting rid of Stephon Diggs. They moved on. They sent him to the Texans. <clears throat> We know that the the Bills got a okay. twenty twenty five yeah. second round pick, also a twenty twenty five fifth rounder, and the Texans got Diggs and a twenty twenty four uh four a six rounder, excuse me, from the Bills. What are your Texans thoughts about that easy. trade? And what are your thoughts about the outlook on the AFC East at this point? There's a lot of people saying right now, I believe it was Baldy saying, as of right now, his favorite to win the AFC East is the New York Jets. What are your thoughts on the trade and what are your thoughts on that, man? I'll give you the final word. On paper, I'm definitely agreeing with that. We should be, you know, God willing, what's going on with our, you know, all offensive line. That's why I just want us to back it up in the draft. So, so you know, I wholeheartedly, I guess, is a good word or better word, choice of words. But as far as the bar for little miserable, oh, that's so great. Oh, man. And, and it's awesome, too, because people want to put Allen on this pedestal. And he's just been depleting, and it's great. He's just going to go back to throwing interceptions and being a dummy like he was, and now he is. And, you know, the mask is going to be revealed, and that's, that's really what's going to happen. It's glorious. Listen, Rusty, you know? Rusty Oh, man, it's is... great. They, they collapse, man. Mm -hmm. They're collapsing. It's Listen, beautiful. Rusty that's why they're the bark of all miserable. Rusty letting him be known. Uh, yes, Listen, Rusty. I, hate them. <laughs> I got I to gotta slide off. Next time I have a show, <laughs> I want to hear from you, all right? My friend, it was a great call. Absolutely, Joe. Salute to you and salute fellow savages. Let's go, Jess, and do this dress smartly, please. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, man. I hear you. Listen, we're going to keep getting to these lines. Again, the number is 515-602-9639. Again, 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. We're taking all callers. The Jets have some incoming visits, okay? We know that they're definitely bringing folks in to you know, kind of feel them out. Uh, Nabbers is going to be into the building, Malik Nabbers. Uh, Michael Pratt as well, a quarterback, is going to be in. Jordan Morgan is going to be coming in soon. Palmer as well, wide receiver, is going to be, you know, being brought in for a second. Uh, Troy Fontanu as well. I believe Troy Fontanu is going to come in April 17th. That's what, according to sources, is, he's going to be in the building. Then Tez Walker as well, and as well, again, Troy Franklin. Again, a lot of these things are moving and shaking right now. But those are, you know, the visits that have been announced uh, currently by the Jets. All right. So 
we're going to see. You know, there's a lot of people coming in, a lot of talk, a lot of moving and shaking. It's going to be very interesting to see how the New York Jets handle the draft. We're going to get back to these lines. Again, 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. We're taking all callers. Listen, salutes to the savages, okay? Christopher Phillips in the building says, I'm in the building. All offensive linemen or proponents of trading down in the draft need to sit their keisters down. We all the way up like Fat Joe and Remy Ma. <laughs> I mean, I, I hear you, Chris. All right, look, I, I've started to talk about trading down myself. You gather some capital, it can do big things for the New York Jets. So we'll keep getting to these lines again. 515-602-9639. Again, 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in and taking all callers. Next! We're going to Ted. Ted, we're coming directly to you. Justin, I see you. We'll come to you in a second as well as Mike. I see y'all, all right? But we got to get to Ted. He's on the line. For those of you that do not know, oh, Ted, he's a savage. Savage! Ted salutes. Always good to talk to you, man. Listen, we got some things what moving. Up, What's going on, man? Look, we're sitting here right now. Ashton Davis has been re-signed by the New York Jets. I'm looking at the safety position, and I'm going, oh, there's, there's there's some things that I'd like to see added, but what are your thoughts on the re-signing, and are you set with how the safety position is right now? Would you like to see the New York Jets go out and do more and grab something else and bring it in here to continue to upgrade the safety position? I think we can address that later on the draft show. I, first of all, good evening, and I wasn't sure if I should call the private line on you know the, the Cali line or the or the Iowa call. For Listen, it. bash. So I took you're, my chances on the the five one five one. Yeah, you're you're so free to that. bash block talk. For those of y'all that don't, you're free to bash block talk tonight. You're free. I, I I've already gotten messages from people that say, Joe, I'm about to bash block talk left and right. For listen, it's working tonight. I'm excited that block talk has shown up. Go. And done its job. Okay, no. here we are. But go, go ahead, Ted. I, I think we can address that, Joe, later in the rounds. Um, you know, maybe four or five. I wouldn't make that a high priority. But one one position I would make a high priority, and I do want to trade down, similar to Rusty. I don't, I'm not sure if I'm going to go down to twenty five, but I would go down fifteen to twenty range, and I would insist on the second rounder. Because in the second round, I'd either want a receiver mm -hmm. or, personally, I would like to get Chris Jenkins Jr. from okay. Michigan okay. as okay. a run stopper. He, he's a beast of a uh, – walking my dog here, sorry. No, no he's, he's a very, very good middle, middle rusher and run stopper. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so uh, I, I think – I, I, let, let's do this. I, I, let's let's separate this. I want to I want to I want to start with your your first round take though. So if you're moving down, right? You said you want to move down to like 15 or something like that. Who are you? Who is the player that you're looking to target then? Um, at at, at 15, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Well, I would I would like I wouldn't be it wouldn't be a receiver. It would be a lineman. Okay. Uh, I was hoping. I was hoping for Fatanu, but it sounds like he's getting a little hot in you know oh, man. in terms of draft mm. positioning in Washington. Uh you know, I Guyton, I mean Guyton's getting calls for top ten and twelve too. Somebody has to I think what's gonna happen, Joe, is a lot of the a lot of these linemen are so evenly matched mm -hmm. that we're gonna find two or three linemen that we we can be happy with. And I think we'll be able to go down to like twenty. Mm -hmm. That, that's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. Same as receivers. I think mm. we're going to find two or three guys that we'd be comfortable with in the second or third round, and just see where, you know, we can maneuver in the draft. Okay. Because it's so deep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now you now now in your second round, right? You're talking about taking mm -hmm. a interior D lineman, Chris Jenkins Jr. And I and I get it. But can you really afford yep. to do that with the knee? Because if you're taking a lineman, an offensive lineman in the first round, I'm looking at the wide receiver position, mm -hmm. and I'm like, man, mm -hmm. you got to – I would like to add someone else there, especially, again, with the uncertainty of Alan Lazard. Mike Williams is not going to be ready. Yep. He already, already talked about it until, like, the basically week one. So I would like to add another, you know, another piece there. 
especially again with you know Aaron Rodgers is going to be here at least they said at least one maybe two more years I want to add another piece to pair with Garrett Wilson another young guy fresh set of legs I'd like to do that and I feel like there's bigger needs outside of the linemen but you'd like to grab Mm -hmm. Jenkins Jr. what exactly like is he do you think he's that much of a game changer to take him over the needs that we have on this football team the other like drastic needs we have here well well He's one of my options. I mean, I would love to get Lad McConkey, but I think that's that's the kind of guy you're going to need to get back in the first round for. Mm-hmm. But Joe, once our once our DL D- defensive lineman went down, we were exposed in the running game. You know, Quinnen, somebody. We need another playmaker in the middle. Mm-hmm. We need another playmaker in the middle to right. go with Quinnen to disrupt the middle of the field. I mean, I could see a third rounder, mm-hmm. like you said. You know, a third round receiver, or you can trade back into the second. Mm-hmm. You know, if you if you find somebody you like, um, like uh, the kid from Wapolk is, is the kid from Washington, mm-hmm. Jalen Polk, I think his name is. The, Joe, there's so much depth. I mean, if you find if you find somebody you love in the second round, then maybe you can take a lineman in the third. But we have to address the running position, Joe, mm-hmm. uh, defensive line, because. Who will we? You know, if we go plug and play somebody, and they get hurt again, we're going to be in the same position. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We need a young, a young player, in in the middle of the field. No, listen. I, um, and he's not just he's not just he's not just a run stopper either. The mm-hmm. guy can pass rush too. Mm-hmm. No, so. listen. I, I hear you, and I mean the New York Jets definitely, you know, work to address this defensive line position. I know we brought back Hector and Tanzil Smart also as well is another guy that I think really yeah. is going to have a chance to to do some things this season. He's always been a guy that's either been fringe roster or making the roster. And now, especially with some of the other guys that, you know, we moved on from Al Woods, who is not back, and even Quentin Jefferson, who I thought the Jets were going to bring back, but they didn't either. Uh, but we were able to get, you know, Fotu and Ken Law as well in the building. So I understand, you know, looking at the defensive line position and saying, hey, I'd like to pair someone else with Quentin Williams. But I, I personally think would be all right there. Honestly, if you're if you're looking to go mm-hmm. defensive lineman, or if you're looking to address something else on the de- on the defense that could need some work, I, I I would look at the situation. I would say, hey, why not look at inside linebacker if you're going to do that? Because there's no one behind C.J. Mosley at all. I'm there too, Joe. I'm there too, Joe. There, there, Joe there's nobody behind him whatsoever. Yeah. If he goes today, the New York Jets are going to have a big issue filling in that that inside linebacker spot. There's no one. I, you know, and, and I hope again, knock on wood, I don't want to see him go down and get hurt. But man, I, there's there's no one there. And again, we're going to see if if Sherwood is going to be able to you know secure that other linebacker spot. See what he's going to bring to the table. But that's a big question too. But I'm looking, man, wide receiver with so many guys that could be there again. Uh, I would like to take one of those guys. Now, my question for you though, Ted, is when we look at this situation, there's a mm-hmm. lot of Jets fans. There's rumblings about Joe Douglas looking to make a splash move. A lot of Jets fans want to see that. There's a lot of Jets fans talking about that Joe Douglas should trade up to draft alt, right? A lot of people looking at, hey, maybe the Jets trade from 10 to somewhere around 5 or 4 and grab him. What are your thoughts on that, man? Do you think that's something that, that Joe Douglas should explore and do, especially, again, with the seat being so hot, a lot of Jets fans saying, listen, if you need to nail a pick, if you want an offensive lineman, move up, spend the capital, and draft the best guy. What are your thoughts about that? I, I would never do that. Because let me say this, Joe. You're gonna, you have other positions you need to fill through the draft. And I know it's all in, but, I mean, you're going to spend a lot of capital to move up to five. Or, I mean, if he slides to eight, maybe, you know, maybe you could go and throw a third rounder in to get moved down two spots. But, hey, Joe, but if you get a chance, go. There was a video by Mike Martz. He was the offensive coordinator for the Rams in the, you know, the greatest show on turf. Mm-hmm. He did an evaluation of the offensive lineman. He said he didn't like Joe Alt as a prospect mm. because he's too high and he's very stiff and his um his base isn't very stable. He gets mm-hmm. off balance a lot. He skates a little bit. Mm-hmm. So there's some people that don't Yeah. I wouldn't say don't like him, mm-hmm. but there's 
I, you know what I mean? The, no, I, I get it. For I, I, your, I, your, your, your player. Yeah, there, there's mm-hmm. a lot of, and, and this is, a, I talk to Jets fans about this, especially when I go back and forth. There's a mm-hmm. lot of evaluators, especially when you look at the NFL draft. There's a lot of people that are, well, pretty much every team should be doing that, but they're drafting for their scheme, right? So there's players that may be phenomenal sure. players, but they don't fit their scheme, right? They don't fit whatever scheme that the, sure. the team's looking at. So why would you take a guy if you if he's going to come in and not fit? I know that there's a lot of people that love Joe Alt as the complete package, but they talk about how, you know, kind of the length is an issue with him and things like that. I know that there's a lot of people that love Olu Fasanu, love him. They think he's the... I've, mm-hmm. I've talked to some people that think that he is the best tackle in the draft, or at least they think he's the best pass protector in the draft as far as pass pro, that he does it, that he can get it done, and he's very smooth. There's so many, you know, again, there's a lot of, of different opinions, especially about uh, especially about the, the top two, top three guys, but I, and I get it. You know, right. I think, again, I think Joe Alt is the best complete package, um, you know, out of the class, but I don't think it's like a massive drop-off after him. I don't, at least in the first – Three, right. you know, three to four, the top three to four guys. I don't think there's a massive drop off from him to Olu and Fuaga. Their, their games are, you know, different clearly, but I, I think they're still solid prospects, right? right? I think so too, Joe. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't, I don't think there's too much of a drop off. That's, you know, a reason why I wouldn't really go up and risk you, you know, spend a lot of capital to get up to five. Mm-hmm. I love it. And also, J.D. loves uh, versatile players, right? He yeah. loves the guy that can play multiple positions. So it would be out of his character. And you know what's funny, Joe? It was out of his sort of out of his character to, to draft Mackay because mm. that's a big, hulking left tackle. And he was right the first year, right? Mm-hmm. And then it kind of fell apart. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, that one didn't work out. But I, I can't see him drafting a massive left tackle like Joe, or even trading up for that. And I, I just don't see that again. I'd rather see him, you know, I think he's going to play conservative. He loves maneuvering in the draft mm-hmm. and he loves mm-hmm. reverse alignment. So I think let's go down. If the Bengals won um, Brock Bowers, mm-hmm. give us a, give us your first and a second. You know, yeah. the Raiders want to move up for a Bo Nix or Michael Penix or whoever's falling um, for a quarterback, then, you know, you give us your second also. Mm-hmm. Or you give us a third because that's not bi- that's not too big of a leap. But I'd even go down to twenty two, Joe. The Eagles, wow. the Eagles, okay. they want Brock Bowers too. Let's go to yeah. I mean, if you like, if you can find two or three linemen that you really love and you want to settle, you know, not settle, but you know, they're at the same grade and it fits your scheme. Like you said, fits your scheme. Then maybe, hey, these are the three guys. Like um, Rusty mentioned, you know, one of them was a, what the Duke guy. Mm-hmm. I think it was from Duke. One mm-hmm. of the linemen. You know, if you have a solid lineman that you you know you can you think he's going to be in the twenties and yeah, you Graham Barton. get that draft capital going. Mm-hmm. Oh, Barton, right? Yeah, Doug. yeah Barton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I'm a I'm a I'm a trade down, Joe. I'm not sure about. I I, I originally wanted Bowers. That's that's a splash. That's a real splash move. <laughs> but uh, take a lot of balls to pick that guy. But uh, well, at ten, uh, let's let's stick there because <laughs> uh, you yeah you you were big on Bowers. I want to know what exactly. Yeah. Now, I, I, I've, again, I, I know you're not a, necessarily a Bowers boy. You definitely like Bowers, though. So when you look at yeah. at the situation, right, and, and taking Bowers, you said, you know, that would take a lot of stones. What exactly, you know, when you look at Bowers and you look at especially the needs of the New York Jets, why are you such a big fan of Bowers and bringing him into the building when we have such massive needs along our offensive line, wide receiver? What do you think that he brings to the Jets that just make him that makes him a guy that you got to snatch at ten, or you thought you had to snatch at ten at one point? Yeah, I I watched a lot of Georgia football. Mm. I, the guy the guy was constantly and this is the SEC. Okay, it's a high level. I'm not mm-hmm. saying it's the NFL, but the guy was always. Couldn't be caught, was always breaking tackles, can block downfield in the running game. And he's really not a tight end. He's not a true tight end. He's more of a hybrid. When you really think about his build, he's only about 230 or 240. He's kind of slender. So he's not like a massive, you know, he's not like Gronk or anything like that. So I just think the mismatches, Joe. He, and, and you know what? He can play, he can play the Debo Samuel position. He can even run out of the backfield. You know, he he could be Debo in our offense. <laughs> that, that's a, that's a he big. He can run, yeah. catch screens. 
Mm-hmm. All that. I mean, that's you get the ball out of Rogers' hands. This is it's as good as a lineman, you know. Oh. And he's a mismatch. I don't think I don't think linebackers and safeties are really going to cover that guy. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't see. It. I think you need like a corner on him. I really do. I mean, I look. I, I've gone back and forth with a lot of people. I hear you, and I again I, for the record, I want the record to reflect that I think that Bowers is a good player. Yes, sir. I want. I think that Bowers is a is a is a very good player. I just don't want to yeah. have. I don't. I, I honestly, I, I don't want to have anything to do with them because there is so much of a need along the offensive line. And, and you just said yourself, if you get the ball out of Rogers' hands quickly. It's as good as alignment. I don't think yeah. people really understand that, like, if you have – we saw it last year, right? We we literally saw this, and this is what I, I go back and forth with the Bowers boys about, is that we literally mm-hmm. saw the whole get the ball out of your hands quickly thing completely fall apart. I believe it was the Jets played the Dolphins. That's when um, Simeon got his start, and he was getting the ball out of his hands as fast as you could, and the offense was going nowhere because nobody could block. Nobody could block. Right. We like a, a, a two. But we fixed the line though. But we fixed the line though. I, it, well, you fixed the line. <laughs> you think, right? You I, think we did? I, I mean, we we did. We 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 fixed the line. We did some things. But here's the deal: is that those fixes, right? Especially Tyron Smith, major injury histories. This could become unfixed very quickly, very quickly. Let's say Tyron yeah. comes out. And has another season where he only plays four games, like he did like a couple seasons ago. Then what? Mm-hmm. There's a massive hole there at left tackle. And please don't tell me that Carter Warren is ready to be the Jets starting left tackle because he's not. That would not be the first name out of my mouth. Joe. <laughs> that would not be the first name out of my mouth. I can tell you that, Joe. I agree with you on that one. <laughs> so it's just it's 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 it's. Very con, con, uh, concerning yeah. to me, especially, and, and again, I get the weapon stuff. I understand that, right? But my argument against mm-hmm. Bowers as well is, listen, I've seen the New York Jets, right, survive injuries to, you know, weapons that we have. A lot of people, the first thing they scream is, well, what's going to happen if uh, Garrett Wilson goes down? I believe that if Garrett Wilson goes down, I hope this never happens. But if he does, if Aaron mm-hmm. Rodgers is fully mm-hmm. healthy, he can raise the play of all the other players that we have along our offense, right? Our offense is going to adjust, of course. Yes, sir. But I think he raises the talent. You look at what he did in Green Bay. I don't think that Valdez Scantling is like an uh, 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 unbelievable wide receiver. Even, hell, look at uh, Alan Lazard, right? Look at what he's able to do with Alan Lazard. Right. Look at how Alan Lazard looked last year, right? Uh, I think that we can continue, right? He can continue to do those things. He can continue to – to raise the the play of guys, right? And it's not like we're dead at the tight end position, right? We got Ruckert. We got, uh, you know, Conklin, who – Conklin's really good, especially with the bad quarterback play he has. You can utilize Brees Hall as well in the passing game. There's so many adjustments we can make. But if you do not properly protect Aaron Rodgers and get another lineman in here, if he goes down, it's over. Because we've seen it. Oh. We, we've seen it. Oh, yep. baby, we've seen it. Not only have we seen – the second you lose Aaron Rodgers, everything else is done. Not only is Aaron Rodgers, you know, the, the guy that facilitates everything and is the best player on the team, but he's also the best offensive coordinator that we have. Because without Aaron Rodgers, oh, man, Nathaniel Hackett is horrific. <laughs> he's real bad. <laughs> and we've seen it. So uh, that that's my Absolutely. thing. That's my thing. So that that's, that's my argument to get that. But before I let you go, because we've had a great discussion here mm-hmm. going back and forth, Man, you look at this AFC. Yes, you look at this AFC situation, AFC East right now. Stephon Diggs is gone. I am saying I believe that, you know, the Jets should win the AFC East. I don't think the Patriots are scary at all, right? Mayo, he's in his first year as a start as a as a head coach. That quarterback situation, they're probably going to be. I know they got Bursett, but he's not the future there. Like they're they're about to get a dose of reality and what it's like to really be in the NFL now. That the you know one of the greatest head coaches ever is gone and, and Brady's been gone. You look at the Dolphins; they've lost some pieces, and I'm looking around. The Bills now lose Stephon Diggs. Now you really got to figure out who Josh Allen is without him and Gabe Davis. And I'm saying to myself, if Aaron Rodgers is yep. fully healthy this year, I think the Jets should take the AFC East. What say you? Hey Joe, real quick, uh, I I did say I would take Lad McConkey 
if, if not Chris Jenkins. So okay. I'm sure you'd be happy with Len McConkey. Yeah. That guy is a hell of a uh, wide receiver. So yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. down with Len McConkey, mm-hmm. but I think he may go in the first. That's mm-hmm. the only problem. Um, Joe, we should win the division going away for healthy. Okay. It should it shouldn't be close. Mm-hmm. Um, we should split with Buffalo, maybe win both. We should split with Miami, maybe win both. We should beat New England twice. Uh, you know, no more of these bogged down games, seven to six. And I mean, we have no excuses, Joe. Our mm-hmm. offense should be good for 21, 24, 27 points a game. Mm-hmm. And our defense is our defense. And they won't be on the field as much. There won't be as much stress on the defense. And we'll play with leads. We have no, we have no excuses, Joe. We should win going away. Yeah. Our division, 11, 12 wins. We should. Yeah. If not, everyone has to go. Wow. Or maybe maybe <laughs> Douglas stays. But if, uh, Joe, if we, we win nine games and go nine and eight, Joe, ooh. it's old. We, we we can't come back with that. There's no way. Ted, I don't even want to talk about that. What do you think, Joe? No, no, you're – it's it's a sad reality, right? I don't want to see it, and that's why I don't want to talk about it. But you're right. If the Jets only, if the Jets don't make the playoffs, right, at least, um, or like mm-hmm. you said, uh, if they don't get it done, they're done, they're done. And I don't even think Joe yeah. da- Joe Douglas is going to get saved. I don't. I think it's it's over, over, Un- unless unless Woody Johnson looks at just barely missing the play. Unless the Jets just, ba- I'm talking barely uh. miss. Like a game, just barely missed the playoffs. Like we were right there, but something happened. If everybody is fully healthy, everybody, and this just goes off the rails, which I don't know how it can happen, but it's the if it was to happen anywhere, you know, this would be the possibility for it to happen. Man, everybody's gone. Sulla would be gone. Everybody's up out of here, and Joe Douglas would be up out of here. Hackett would be gone. That might be a good thing. Oh man, but Aaron Rodgers would be gone too. <laughs> wow. Aaron Rodgers will be gone too. I don't Trust know. Me. Aaron Rodgers will be gone. Then we have to find a quarterback, Joe. Oh, well, you would. He'd be gone. <laughs> he would be gone. There's no way I think that Aaron Rodgers stays Probably. here with all of the because that that's why he came here was because of those guys. He's talking. I about agree. Them, you know. So I agree. Yeah. I, I don't want to. I don't want to discuss that, but that is a reality, Ted. And you brought it. You brought it to the table, man. You brought it to the table. So before I let yes, you, yes, sir. Go, yes, sir. Before I let you go, man. Before I let you slide off and get up out of here, man. You look at this situation, mm-hmm. right? We got everything moving and shaking here now. You talked about the playoff situation. You talked about everything that we got going on here. You talked about the first round. Before I let you go, if Bowers mm-hmm. and Odunes, you got to stay at 10. Bowers and Odunes, you're sitting right oh. there with them. Who are you taking? <sighs> yep. I'd have to go with Rome. I mean, okay, I like, that's I what I'm talking about. He's that's a, what I'm talking about. He's a very – He's a quality receiver, Joe. You I mean, see, I got him. I got guys. him. I knew I could get you out of that Bowers talk. I knew. Joe, it. Hey, Joe. Yeah. Joe. Yeah. I think Adunze is going top five. Yeah. In my opinion. Wow. Okay. Maybe top six. You know what's crazy? Yeah. There's a there's a lot of talk, and mm-hmm. again, this is rumors swirling. This could just be smoke screens. There's analysts starting to talk about how they think that Rome is the best wide receiver in the draft. There's people talking about that. And yeah. uh, look, there's a lot to be argued. Listen, Ted, I got to slot off. Yes, Next sir. time I have a no, show, Joe. I want to hear from you. All right? Pleasure, Joe. Absolutely. Pleasure, Joe. As always. You have- now, we're going to keep getting to these lines again. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. All right. Next. We are going to Mike. Mike, we're coming to you. Justin, you'll be next. We're coming directly to you, Justin. I see you. All right, new callers, hold on. But we got to get to Mike, all right? For those of you that do not know, this man, Mike, he's a savage. Savage! Mike salutes. We're sitting here. We're talking, man, going back and forth about this upcoming draft. A lot of people are talking about Bowers, man. A lot of people having discussions about the offensive line situation if the jets stay at 10 man who exactly are you looking to see the new york jets draft who's a player you'd like to see him take well you know i like bowers but it, it has to see how the, how the board plays out right i'm a i'm a component of trading up to number five talk to, to me. the giants and take neighbors talk okay I like listen. Neighbors. okay listen and, and i hear you and this is why i was talking about that tonight as well all right. There, I, I tell people, I talk to a lot of Jets fans. 
that are looking, you know, that are that are thinking, excuse me, just like you, that are saying, look, I want to move up. I want to grab a player. Now, you're talking about moving up to number five. What exactly, if you're the New York Jets general manager, what are you willing to give up to get up there? Well, I, I heard a lot of a lot of people saying that if we traded up, it would cost us a 2025 20, second round pick to move up. Mm-hmm. So I, I would go with that all day long. Okay. What what if let's say this? You moving up to five? What if San Diego? Or excuse me, San Diego. Goodness, I still call the Chargers. The San Diego, the Los Angeles Chargers. One day I'm going to get it right. One day, okay? One day. What if Los Angeles says, listen, that second rounder, that's not enough, okay? I want more. You're moving up from 10, right, to 5. There's a there's a chance maybe another quarterback could be there, right? Maybe maybe another team is going to offer. Let's say a guy like Drake May is still around, right? Let's say that there's some moving, some shaking. That price is going up. OK, because we've got to We've got to discuss this. Let's say the Chargers say, listen, that second rounder, not enough. OK, there's other teams calling. They want to move up for this quarterback. You're going to have to give us more. We want a first rounder. Are you willing to do that? No, you're not willing but to give up a first rounder. OK, too, you know, OK, talk, talk. What are you saying? Well, they're going to get they're going to get they're, they're going to get our number 10. That, that'll be the first rounder. Mm-hmm. Um. They go by they go by the draft board points, you know, mm-hmm. and like what they were saying was the second round pick for next year would equal that moving up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but again, when you look at a situation where there's a quarterback that could maybe again you're sitting right there with the Chargers, maybe Drake mm-hmm. May is still there at five. I understand the points chart, I get that, but we know that that points chart mm-hmm. that point chart can kind of be put to the side when you talk about quarterbacks. We've seen teams mm-hmm. give up massive hauls i'm talking look at what the the niners gave up you know for for lance look there's other quarterbacks as well that Mm -hmm. there's been a lot given up for them but you're saying okay if they say first round pick 2025 first you're saying no okay that's where you stop all right so go ahead i don't i don't think may makes it past the patriots i think patriots Mm -hmm. didn't take may yeah more than likely more than likely there's a chance there's a chance especially again there's Mm -hmm. a lot of movement a lot of things moving and shaking so that you're you're thinking about moving up to five. Why not take Alt if you're there mm-hmm. though? If he's still available, you're gonna take neighbors over Alt. Yeah, I think I think neighbors is a beast. Mm. I, I think they they would do some damn they would do some damage with him, Garrett, and yeah. uh, Mike Williams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what about your future at tackle there? If Alt's still sitting there, dude, that that's your future left tackle handed right there to you, especially if you're spinning, you know, a second round pick. Mm. No, I, I like I like all you know. I think uh, I think we can go another way. You know, maybe we can even uh, re-sign Smith. You know, sign him to another deal after the one-year deals up. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. So, uh, maybe we can. Uh, I would even bring in like like uh, Bacchiardi. I would bring him in on the veterans minimum and mm-hmm. have him as backup. You know, mm-hmm. just sit on the bench and then give him incentives like like seven hundred fifty thousand a year a uh, game. If he plays, you know, mm-hmm. I think he would go for that. Yeah. No, listen, I, I hear you, man. I just trading up in, in, you know, period to me is a little, I don't know if Joe Douglas would do it, especially again, we need that capital. I can see them maybe moving some things to get back up in the second round to address wide receiver. But again, Malik is a phenomenal wide receiver like him, Harrison, mm-hmm. uh, Rome. I think they're all great. They're all great. But I don't, I just, I can't see the Jets moving up, especially again and that, and that kid, that kid with the need. Say that it again. Kid Smith too. That kid Troy Smith too. Mm, yeah, there, there's. I'm telling you, there's some really good, good players. Good and, I, and again, I know you're a Bowers guy, and I get that, right? But let's say Bowers isn't there, and you're a mm. ten. Who are you looking to take then? I would go with the uh, the left tackle from uh, Washington. Uh, are, oh, you're talking about um, uh, Fatanu. So, do you think you 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 would take him yeah. at ten, even I, I, I even if Olu? <laughs> Even if Olu and uh, let's say Olu and Fuaga are there, you're still gonna take, uh, you would still take Washington there at ten. Yeah, I think so because I think he's over, overall he's better at uh, mm. like pass block and the run block together. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. I mean, listen, Mike's he's gonna talk his talk. I respect it. These are his takes. Now, as you continue <laughs> to look at this situation, right, kind of switching over from the draft. Mm. 
We got Ashton Davis back in the building, man. What are your thoughts about him in the safety position at this point? I was hoping they were going to resign him because he, he started to turn a page, you know, like last year he, he actually came around. You know, he's a good he's a good uh, backup in special team right now. Like he started to show some signs. You know, I'm glad they brought him back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you like to see the Jets continue to address the safety position? I've been a big proponent of trying to sign a guy in free agency. I like Justin Simmons a lot. I think he's still out there. Or are you are you set with what we have right now? Um, well, you know they're going to carry four safeties. Um, I would go through the draft on okay. that, like a late round safety. You know, um, I, I I agree with you. We should definitely uh, draft an inside linebacker. We we definitely got to get somebody. Yeah, you know? yeah. I think I definitely I think that a little bit later on in the draft, the uh, the Jets are going to address that because I I think that's a position a lot of people are mm -hmm. not talking about. I'm telling you, they're not talking about it. I've been starting to discuss it quite a bit because, mm -hmm. again, life after C.J. Mosley isn't going to be as pretty mm -hmm. <laughs> as people are thinking. It's it's not going to be very pretty, especially when you don't really have an answer there at inside linebacker. So before I let mm -hmm. you go, Mike, I'm looking at the AFC East right now, and I'm saying to myself, man, the Jets should take it because I don't think anyone else really – is up to snuff as far as us. You know, our roster, I think, on paper, mm. we look better than everybody else, right? We know that our defense is phenomenal. It's been mm. phenomenal for years. The biggest question mark was our offense. Well, if Aaron Rodgers is fully healthy, can you really question our offense anymore? I mean, I'm saying to myself, the Jets should absolutely win the AFC East next year. What are your thoughts on that, man? Uh, on paper, yeah, exactly. Um, the Dolphins, they, they, would, they would beat all the uh, – like last year, they would beat all the all the bad teams, and they would lose to all the good teams. They lost a lot of people. Uh, Buffalo, they lost a lot. Imagine how how bad is uh, Diggs the diva. Imagine how bad he was in a locker room mm -hmm. just to get rid of him. You know? Yeah. Um, like, and they I, ate a it, lot it, of cap it, pass too. Every, they did, and like uh, like I want to give uh, props to Joe Douglas because he he gets an A plus for the for the uh, off season. You know. Mm -hmm. I, I totally trust Joe Douglas, whatever he's going to do. And, like, like he knew his job was on the line. And he could have went like uh, McCagna did and, and spend, 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 you know. Mm -hmm. But he didn't do that. He went he went frugal, you know. And he, he did some really, really smart trades, you know. Yeah. So, I trust Joe. And if uh, if the Jets don't make the playoffs this year, that's on Robert Sala. I, mm. would, I would not get rid of Joe Douglas. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I like wow. Joe Douglas, you know. Keep him. He's our first GM that's been good for how long, you know? Mm. So if if the Jets don't get it done, you're saying clean out the coaching staff, but you're keeping uh, Joe Douglas moving forward, right? Yeah, yeah, because he's, he's doing his job. He's bringing all the talent in, you know? You, you got to put some blame on the coaches too, you know? Yeah, but at the same time, though, Mike, uh, Robert Sulla and all these mm – -hmm. the, these guys are all hired by Joe Douglas. Robert Sulla was his oh, first yeah. coaching selection. That was the guy. He didn't He didn't pick Adam Gaze. When Joe Douglas got the job, he inherited mm -hmm. Adam Gaze. Well, he moved on from Adam Gaze, you know, got rid of him. And the first guy he pointed out, he mm -hmm. said, hey, Robert Sulla, I want you in the building. So if Robert Sulla fails and everything else falls apart because of that, mm -hmm. isn't that on Joe Douglas too? It, it is to a degree. I'm just I, saying. I like Robert Sulla. Like the, the player – Go you ahead. know, the players will run through a wall for the guy, you know. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, I think I, I think it's it's gonna go good. I think I think we're gonna have a really good year this year. Mm -hmm. I'm like I'm I'm very excited. Yeah. Now yeah. I think uh maybe ch maybe A C championship game, maybe Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I don't know, I, I, I'm going. I'm going there. I'm yeah. Going there. No, listen, I, I hear the expectations all day. Listen, Mike, I gotta slide off. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, mm -hmm. man. You have some solid takes there. Uh, no problem, Joe. All right, you have a good one. Listen, I know a lot of people talking about wanting to get rid of Joe Douglas or wanting to keep Joe Douglas and get rid of everybody else, but I'm just saying, listen, I'm giving the flip side of the argument here. Uh, Robert Sulla stinks, then Joe Douglas and his decision to hire Robert Sulla stinks too. And, I mean, are we not going to talk about old uh, Zach Wilson? Because to this point, he ain't been that good. You know what I'm saying? And Joe Douglas was the guy that made that selection too. <laughs> you know I'm, I'm just saying, guys. I'm just saying. There's some some questions there. Salutes to all the savages in the chat. I see you in the building, Bree. I see you. Bree says Diggs leaving bust the division wide open. Yeah, listen. 
the Bills have lost some pieces, okay? Let's not even talk about Jadavius White. They've lost some other guys too, all right? I'm telling you, I think the Jets are poised to take this division. They truly are. We're going to keep getting to these lines again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in next. I'm going to Justin. I'm coming straight to Justin. I know he's got some smoke, and I want to hear it. Justin salutes. Welcome to the show. I know you want to talk that talk. First off, I want to start with Ashton Davis. Okay. Ashton Davis has been resigned by the New York Jets. Give me your thoughts on him being brought back and the condition of the New York Jets safety position. Uh, I, I don't think people realize how good of a signing this was. One, we lost Justin Hardy, a special team, not only a, a leader, but a special team demon. Ashton Davis, I, I don't think people realize how this guy developed as the years goes on. I mean, years ago, everyone was like, all right, let's cut this guy. He's a bust. And, you know, last year he, he developed and had a great year. And I think with the addition of Hasim Reddick, and uh, revamped pass rush, this guy has the potential to be even better than he was last year. And I saw a stat that he had. The, the ball always seems to find Ashton Davis. So I think this was more of uh, I think this was an excellent signing. And I, to be honest, I've been pounding the table all offseason to get Ashton Davis back. I didn't think Justin Simmons was a realistic possibility just because uh, – how we value the safety position. So, yeah, I think Ashton Davis is a great signing to have back, to be honest, especially with Chuck Clark coming off a major injury and, you know, you know, stuff like that. But I still think, you know, we can address it in the draft now. And now it doesn't, just doesn't pigeonhole us into, you know, get going, must having a safety. But, you know, we still have the flexibility to take a safety in the later rounds, which that's the route I would go. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I like the move. Yeah. So now I know you're talking a little bit about the draft because I thought I thought bringing back Ashton Davis was a solid move for the Jets. Again, we'll see, you know, as things play out. I'm hoping, you know, they, they do something else, especially, again, with there's so many questions about Chuck Clark and that ACL injury. But you started yeah, to talk sure. about the draft. Now, Justin, when you're you, right now, the New York Jets are sitting at 10. Who's the guy you're eyeing for the Jets to take? Who's the guy that you've covered the most there that could be there at 10 to come in and help the New York Jets? I'm I'm right in your wheelhouse. I, I've been arguing with people. See, here's the thing that people just don't understand. They don't understand the the salary cap and how it works. <laughs> they don't understand how free agency works. They don't understand how moves are supposed to be made in free agency. Which okay, cool. You don't understand it, but to sit here, they just want the sexy weapon, whether it be Brock Bowers, which. Oh, my God, don't even get me going with that because I've been arguing with people for months. Yeah. Our, our tight end room is, is not and not an issue to me. Tyler Conklin had 600 yards last year, but, you know, you're not allowed to say anything about him with terrible quarterback play, yeah. which with Rodgers, I think he'll be elevated even more. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rucker, we obviously, you know, we'll, we see what he can do with the blocking, but I still think he can give you more with the receiving game. Cool. But to, to sit here and take a, a tight end at 10 – or a weapon, no, because the percentages are already showed you. The guys that we signed on the offensive line, we have no depth. Mm-hmm. So these people sitting here, well, you know, the guy might not start. Well, if I'm playing the game, those guys, Morgan Moses coming off a major injury on a one-year deal. Tyron Smith, yes, he signed a great contract with us, but it's only for one year. Mm-hmm. So do you want to be in the same position as – uh, next year arguing about the offensive line. So, no, it, it's obvious to me. If I'm Joe Douglas, I'm taking an offensive lineman at 10, no questions asked. Ideally, you trade back, you recoup a second rounder, or depending on how far you go back, the third rounder, ideally a second, so you can get a receiver and address it that way. Yep. But these people just want the sexy item. I get it. Cool, I'm not. But, no, the offensive lineman should be the pick at 10, whether it be I'm in your boat, Fountain, no, he's the guy because he's he's basically a better version of AVT. Mm-hmm. Yes, we we love AVT, but to be honest with you, we don't even know what AVT is going to be coming off the two major injuries back to back years. So, yeah. the the depth on the offensive line that that's the only thing that's really concerning me on this team right now. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm taking offensive lineman at ten, mm-hmm. or if we're going to trade back or whatever. But 
offensive linemen still should be the pick. I get it, receiver, the sexy choice. But these are going to be the same people in our fan base that are going to be complaining, oh, we had to see Newman snapping the ball. We had to see Glazer last year. Yeah. I mean, come on, what are we doing? Play the percentages. Yeah. And and these people are also saying, oh, well, the guy's not going to – because the same thing with Will McDonald. Oh, he wasn't a day one yeah. impact guy. Well, guess what? Day one impact, there's no reason why – also – it doesn't doesn't mean necessarily the guy's not going to start. If you take, let's just say, a Fulaga, and he beats out Morgan Moses on the right side, well, guess what? That's good because Morgan Moses is only making five point five million dollars. That's not even backup money. Mm-hmm. So these people don't really understand what Joe D- Douglas really did in bringing in John Simpson and Morgan Moses. Not only did he bring them in to have experience, these guys, but these guys are also on cheap contracts. Mm-hmm. So cheap labor is good. So mm-hmm. that's what we need to do. Also with the Hasim Reddick addition, we're going to have to pinch money if we're going to give him an extension. Right now we don't know what the holdup is with that because they're obviously crunching the numbers. But with the Hasim Reddick, we're going to have to get guys on cheap contracts. So these people saying, oh, well, we're going to have to get an offensive lineman. There's only so much money to shell out. And what better a thing to do to get a lineman in the first round on a cheap contract? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and listen, I, I'll even so, add, because you, you're, on, you're on fire right now, Justin, but I'll even add that a lot of people that are saying, hey, you know, well, if not a day one starter, he's sitting on the bench. It's like, wait, hold on. Like you said, listen, Tyron Smith, there's no guarantee he's going to play a full season. I highly doubt that he will. I yeah. think he's definitely going to miss some games yeah, this and year. Thing, and guess yeah, what? That's yeah, when you plug that in that young tackle. Either is, yeah, and the thing that people don't realize is, too, yeah, we're penciling. He, the guy hasn't been healthy for a 17-game season. So guess what? If, if we're going to be the team we really think we're going to be, guess what? We're not going to be playing 17 games. We're going to be playing 19, 20 games, hopefully, mm-hmm. if we're bringing home a Lombardi trophy. But that's yeah. the ultimate goal. Yeah. No, not listen. to play those 17 games and get bounced one and done in the playoffs. No, we're trying to bring home a ring. Like, mm. I don't understand those people with that philosophy. So, to me, the pick in the first round is offensive line, mm. like, without a doubt. Listen, Justin calling in with some fire tonight. Let's give him a hand. I, you know, yeah, give him a hand. That audience, yeah. This is a call. Not too much. I don't pay y'all to go too crazy, but we definitely have to respect Justin on that take. Now, you're talking about drafting offensive line, and I'm right there with you, Justin. I'm right there with you. I think we need to do it, especially with, you know, Aaron Rodgers coming off of that Achilles injury. I don't want to see him, you know, uh, come off the field or or get injured again, so I want him to be properly protected. There's a lot of Jets fans screaming, listen, if we're going to take an offensive lineman, let's trade up for Alt. Let's make it happen right now. Let's make that big splash trade and really cement, you know, this 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 tackle position with the best tackle in the draft, right? What are your thoughts about that, Justin? Would you want to see Joe Douglas make a big splash trade, try to move up maybe to five and, and grab alt? Is that something you'd like to see uh, Joe Douglas make happen? Uh, to be honest with you, I think we should re- remove the word splash because once we start about splash, things get tricky. I, I like smart decisions, not splash moves. Mm. Trading up to five, I'm not. I'm trying to add draft capital. So mm. trading up to five, I think, would cost too much draft capital. So I, I'm not. I'm not giving up no second, uh, future second rounder or you know something like that. I mean, maybe I, I'm not. I'm not doing it to get up to five. But if you can <laughs> tell me you give up a fourth rounder or two fourths or something like that. This year, okay, cool. I'm interested, but I'm not doing it for no second, future second rounder, third. You know, depending on what quarterbacks are on the board, because I know the last caller he said something about the the draft card that goes out the window. Like you're saying, you gotta you gotta <laughs> yep. put a wrench in it when it's the sweet in there. So, yep. I I mean, I don't I don't think five is honestly realistic. Mm-hmm. Now, if you want to go up to eight, okay, now now we can have a conversation. Mm-hmm. But five, nah, I'm good on that. If we, if that's going to cost too much. Okay. But I definitely think we need to add a weapon here, mm-hmm. whether it be get now. Uh, now talking about trading up, I'm more interested in recouping. If if we go to four, like see, here's the problem with us right now. Mm-hmm. Like you said, the, the Saints are at 14, so that's kind of like I heard the the first call. I think it was he wants to go back to 25 and 22. Yeah, nah, I'm good on that. Yeah, that's just nonsense. I, I'm not. 
missing out on one of those top guys, whether it be Fashanu okay. or, or you know, I don't know how we like, or yep. Fulaga, one of those guys. Mm-hmm. Nah, I'm not doing that. I can't do that. Okay. But if you want to go back to like 13, ideally, and hopefully you have like a guy, team that wants to go out for Michael Pinnock, and you could get a second rounder, that, mm-hmm. that's the ideal right there. That, then it's like a win-win because mm-hmm. then you get the second rounder and then you see who's there. But, I mean, if you have to, you got to give up package and try to maybe, if you can't get the second round, or maybe you just get a third, maybe you take the two thirds and go up into the second and then get your weapon, something like that. That's what I'm interested in. Okay, but, okay. I mean, if you come out of the drip and then maybe third round or you go like a, whoever's there, like a, the UConn guy, I think, what's his name, Christian Hayes or someone mm-hmm. like that. I, there's no reason why we can't come or come in with and get two linemen. I know people are saying, oh, one lineman is good enough. No, one lineman in this deep class is not good enough. Okay. I need at least two linemen in this year's draft. Yeah. Now, now so you I talked think, about – you talked ideally about like a Ricky Pearsall in uh-huh. the second round or something, a weapon like that. that yeah. I know we can bring in the guy from North Carolina. I think oh. it is uh, Tez Walker. Yeah. Someone like that. Leggett, Leggett, obviously I'd be interested in him, but I don't know if he would – I think he'll, he's going to be early second rounder, so I don't know how far we would go up, but mm-hmm. – yeah, no, those those are some of the guys that I'm interested in. But, yeah, like you're saying with the C.J. Mosley thing, I, I don't think people realize, like, we don't have any depth at the linebacker position. I get None. it, Zaire Barnes, cool, whatever. Yeah. But I think another position we need to address possibly is maybe maybe cornerback, too, because we don't know what's going to happen with D.J. Reed or Michael Carter extension. No, that's a kind of sneaky need for me that no one's talking about. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, I mean – Yep. I, I would still add another. I think we definitely need another running back because I think we're going to be a run first team, and mm-hmm. I think you want to keep Brees fresh during the for the playoffs. I'm still cool with Izzy, but you know he's an unknown right now. So I mean, well, I mean you got to give him the ball. Need to add another running back in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, right. look, I understand. I understand no. people talking about adding another veteran guy. I know that there's a lot of lot of people that have been having that discussion. I think Izzy would be good, but you got to give the kid the ball. At some point, like, he's got to start running yeah. it. And honestly, when we did give him the ball, he showed some promise. He, he yeah, can yeah. go. Like, he can yeah. he can run. Oh. But our offensive yeah. line was cheeks last year, and they could barely open any holes. So, it's like, I, I think with a better offensive yep. line, I think we can really see Izzy take the next step. So, I, I, I think that uh, giving him the ball behind Brees, I think, would be a good move. But I would not yeah. be surprised if they did add yeah. maybe a veteran back to the guys that are out there. Now, listen, Justin, this has been a phenomenal call from you. Yeah. But before I let you go, I want to get your thoughts on this, man. I've been saying all night, I think that this is the year that the New York Jets take the AFC East. I'm not scared of the Patriots. Uh, the Bills, we see no Gabe Davis, no Stephon Diggs. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I'm, uh, you know, as necessarily as scared of Josh Allen as I was, you know, when he was really starting to turn up. And then you look at the Dolphins, they lost yeah. a lot of pieces as well. What are your thoughts, man? Do you think that the Jets will take the AFC East this season? All right, let, let me take the cookies out of the oven. Let me, let me blow. I think there's starting to be smoke on a fire alarm. People just don't understand, like, how, how, what Joe Douglas has done here. I think people are finally starting to come around for the Jets for the division. To be honest with you, my dad's a Bills fan, so I follow every move that the Bills make. The, the Bills are not scary, and I, I say this even before the Stephon Diggs. We had the Bills number, like even before the Stephon Diggs. So now without that. Stephon Diggs, there is no reason the Jets should not win the division this year, mm. period. Injuries are the only thing stopping us, and ourself is the only thing that are stopping us. Mm-hmm. The Jets should win the division, period, this year. And I, and it's it's we should be hosting a home playoff game. Mm. If this defense is top three defense last year with the abysmal offensive line that we had, the abysmal quarterback play that we had, I mean, come on, there, if this there, you can't win the division this year. Then I I don't know what to tell you. I don't know when it's gonna happen. Yeah. If we can't end this playoff drought. Then I I mean, yeah, I might as well just go, get into pottery or whatever and stop watching the team because if we can't do it this year, yeah. Joe, I I don't know what to tell you. And another thing that people don't realize, Thomas Morstead and Greg Zerline was an excellent resign because yep. one, if that's how the defense played last year, could you imagine when the defense is at, the, when the offense is actually getting first downs and moving the change and the defense is actually fresh yep. and we're getting maybe one or two first downs and it's a punt? Okay, cool. Before we're, oh, defense comes out three and out, defense comes out, defense comes out. Mm. So, 
I was arguing with people months ago, even before the Reddick thing, they were telling me, oh, the defense is going to regress. I was like, the defense is going to regress? Mm. Now, and then on top of it, we add Ken Law, we add Reddick? I mean, yeah. come on. It, it, this team is loaded. Like, Listen. There, there's no reason why this division cannot be ours. Yeah. Period. Listen, Justin, this has been a phenomenal call from you. I got to slide off because I got other callers. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, all right? Oh, for sure, for sure. Absolutely. You have a good one. Listen, Justin called in with some fire, man. Man, man, he talked that talk. Listen, salutes to everybody again. Please give the stream a thumbs up, all right? Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so when I post content, you'll be in the know. Also, if you want to give to the platform, Cash App is at the bottom of the screen. Super Chat is at the top of the screen. Anything you give is greatly appreciated. Salutes to all the savages in the chat. I see y'all. Dane O salutes to you. He says, uh, agreed. At 10, something beautiful will fall to us. Something we want or something that someone else wants. Mm. He's talking that talk. He's talking that talk. Michael Piper as well salutes to you. Michael says, Brees Hall will have 2,000 yards this year. Pick him up on fantasy football. Listen. Let me tell you something. The New York Jets, I understand that people think that we're about to turn into the Saints. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the New York Jets will finally be able to get back to running the football effectively. Okay? That's when we're at our best. I don't think that Aaron Rodgers, and he doesn't have to be, right? He doesn't have to be Drew Brees or Peyton Manning in his prime or Steve Young or Joe Monte. He doesn't have to be any of those guys. Aaron Rodgers just has to be solid. All right. He doesn't even have to be 25 year old Aaron Rodgers. All he has to be is solid, which I know he can be, which I know he is. And the New York Jets are going to roll people this year because that defense. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Listen, let me tell you all something. <laughs> if you think that the defense is a joke. Oh, boy, you're going to be the only one laughing. The Jets defense is serious business, and they're going to destroy people. I mean, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. This defense is unbelievable and has been unbelievable, right, for some years now has been unbelievable. We'll get back to these lines. Listen, 515-602-969. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call and salutes to Phenom as well in the chat. I see you, Dakota J. Salutes to you. Next, we're going to Chris, man. I know Chris has some takes. Val will come to Oh, we just lost Val. Hopefully Val calls back. We know we need the shenanigans, but we're going to Chris. We're going to Chris, all right? Listen, for those of you that do not know Chris, He's a savage. <laughs> savage. Chris salutes. <laughs> you know going. my. You know what I'm calling though. <laughs> you know what I mean. You know I. You know everybody in the chat know how I feel about this. Okay. You know. You know. Can we start? Hold, hold on. Before we even go there, can we just be a little civil? Let's start with Ashton Davis first. I don't even want to go into right. Ashton Davis is back. He's a New York Jet, right? He's been resigned. What are your thoughts about it, man? I think it, I think it's great for special teams. Uh, you know, um, you know, to do some. But you know, I still want um, I still want them to find a way to get Justin Simmons on this team or Michael Hyde. I still want a a bona fide safety that can read the defense. Um, that could do. But, I mean, Ashton Davis is a good guy. He can spot. We don't know what's going on with Chuck Clark's injury. We don't know if he's going to come back 100%. But uh, I'd like to get somebody in there that, that wants to, you know, that, that sees in, the, you know, guy maybe take a, a little bit of contract again and can't compete at the Super Bowl level. I think that's where we're at right now. I think we can convince some guys to come on on some incentive-later contracts to, go, to make a Super Bowl run for one year. I think we can do that. Like we have the ability to, to make that call now. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, okay, now that we've, we've been civil, I want to go straight to the draft talk with you. <laughs> now, there have been a lot of discussions about taking an offensive lineman. I'm a big proponent of that as well, especially if the New York Jets sit in the 10. I think you're a guy that wants to see – you talked about, you know, trading up and stuff like that. There's been a lot of Jets fans talking about trading up for alt. What are your thoughts about that, man? Is that something you want to see the New York Jets do? 
And I want to address this guy that just called, uh, Justin. Yeah, name great, name. Call. great call. Great call. Let me, let me, let, let, okay, all right, great, great call. All right, but I, I think you're, you're, you, you don't, like I said, that for people that they don't, we don't have so much money. Like the cap can be manipulated, okay? They can be extensions. When you get a certain contract, you get a certain amount of guaranteed money. That money can be pushed into other years, right, in order to make, more cap room this year and here's what that needs to happen okay and this is and and, and i'm gonna tell you like this before i answer that question for all of, a lot of us jet fans and I, this is nothing new to the new jet fans that that have been watching the team and doing this for all the jet fans that that are that are older that you know that have been watching this team we we look at this window as our chance we've been watching richard todd We've been watching Ken O'Brien. We've been watching the Browning Nagels come into this thing. We've been watching all these quarterbacks come into this stadium and promises of things. We've had great defense. We want to win now. We think this is our best chance. So, yeah, we want to put all the, 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 the chips on the table this two-year run. Um, so I'm a proponent of trading up for Joe Alt, Malik Neighbors, or, um, you know, if, if Harrison falls, which I don't think he is, but I think it's Malik Neighbors or, or Alt. This is the thing. I think everyone agrees. Whether you're the Brock Bowers guy or you're a Malik Neighbors, even Marvin Harrison, uh, Har- 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 Harrison guy, you know that Joe Alt is a standard. You know that he's going to be there for 20, 15 plus years. You know he's going to be. He's, there's no question about this guy. Maybe the strength he has to learn a couple of things, like every rookie does. But you know he's going to be a standard on the offensive line. You know he's going to be there for ten years. I have no, I don't think any Joe problem, any Jet fan, regardless of their offensive, or they they has a problem with Joe Hall. Mm-hmm. It's not as many draft choices that you get. It's the quality draft choices that you get. And guys right. in the second and third round mm-hmm. still have to learn this game. They, yeah, okay. They're not coming in dominating. Mm-hmm. Well, that that's 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 not necessarily what true. Second, what 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 second round pick? Have you know in the past two years have 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 developed have have um, propelled a team to a championship? And what you mean? What? what a hold, hold on a second. Hold on a won. second. Hold on. You're talking about second round picks that have come in and been able to impact a team and be a weapon. First, and first really, year. First okay. Year. Uh, Brees Hall. Brees Hall. Brees Hall did that for the New York Jets. He literally ever since we drafted him, and you could look, it was in the second round. He's literally been. You could argue that he's the best weapon on our offense. You could argue that. His first year, his first year before he went down. Hold on, before he went down with the injury, Brees Hall literally was the Jets' heartbeat on offense. Without him doing something, there was nothing. Right. Then he comes back this year, right? And we were all concerned about the, 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 um, the injury, right? The the injury that he had, the, the ACL. But he came back and he was smoking this year too. And if the offensive line was better, Brees Hall would have probably ran. It looked like he could run for two thousand yards, <laughs> dude. He was he was crazy this year too. And there's been other guys as well that have been able right. to impact teams their first year. Creed Humphrey, you look at what he did for Kansas City. Why do you think Patrick Mahomes is so comfortable? Like, there's a lot of things. There's a, right. Listen, there's guys in the second round that can make an impact. I understand what you're saying about, you know, being all in, but you don't want to be all in, you know, so far in that you literally blow off your future. That's the last thing you want to do. And we know that, that Aaron Rodgers is going to be here for some years to come. Now, do the New York Jets need to go crazy and just throw everything completely away and out the door? No, we don't need to do that. I understand Jets fans that want to trade up for Alt, and I get it. But my concern is, how much value are we giving up? And I feel like if, because there's a possibility that there could possibly be a quarterback still available. Possibly. And if that happens, man, that price is going to get very expensive. Extremely expensive, especially when we got other call uh, other teams calling to grab that pick. I don't think you'll be able to do it. And even if that doesn't happen, just moving from ten to five, I think is going to be pretty expensive anyway. Especially due to the fact that we don't have a second round pick this 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 year in the draft. So I get it. But for me, my thing is right when I when I talk to fans like yourself as well, I'd rather us move back, grab a grab a guy like Troy Fatani. Oh. Let's have the discussion. Grab a guy like Troy Fasanu, who's versatile, who's a great lineman, right? That's going to be able to fill our spots if need be. We gain capital, and then we can draft a wide receiver that's going to come in and be impactful in the second round. 
guys that can come in and handle business, guys that can add to this offense, a guy that we can pair with Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall and become a weapon that way. I don't see why we, why that isn't a good move either. But give me your thoughts, Chris. Well, like I said, you know, in the draft and the NFL draft, you you this is what I learned mm-hmm. about being a Jet fan for a lot, lot long time, right? If the Jets took the guaranteed pick, right? They took the guaranteed star. They took Warren Sapp. They took the they took the other guys that that were guaranteed star. Stop speculating. This guy had went to this. They took the guy that they knew that was going to be the guy, right? If they if they did that, mm-hmm. the Jets would have already won a Super Bowl. They've so done that we before, gone, though. We gone, we gone, we go. No, but I'm just saying we we're going and we're going along the same same thing. And yes, they have done that before. You're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. Mm-hmm. You, they've done that in the past. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the draft works in serious ways. Mm-hmm. But like I said, in mysterious ways. But like I said, saying this is this is what I'm saying. Saying a guy in the third or fourth round can't play. He can't play at all, right? He can't do anything at all. Saying that this throwing this guy out or even a first round pick, right? And saying he's going to come in and he's going to dominate guys like Juan Miller on the offensive line, and he's going to destroy. destroy. Makai Becton was a different story, okay? Makai Becton was a guy that was really big, really strong, really thick, and he got hurt and, and affected his career. So he was, you know, a different kind of cat. So the, a lot of these guys, even if you look at the guys last year, the guy you liked on Ohio State, his year was okay. We, we talked about Broderick Jones. They're talking about moving him to right tackle. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, I you know, I, I'm saying that the draft, right, you have to take the – you speak in the top ten, you got to take the guy. You got to take the guy who is going to be the guy. It's not trade up for the guy that you think is going to be the guy. So, like I said, that, that's my thing. I'm looking at a two-year window because mm-hmm. – only Hall of Fame quarterbacks are winning championships. So I'm looking at this I'm looking at this from a perspective where, yeah, we can get a good quarterback and guy can throw for five hundred yards, but we need a Hall of Fame guy to come in and win. I think Aaron Rodgers can go toe to toe with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. So I mean the only difference is if you're saying that the Jet fans, if we're gonna be a run focused offense and we're gonna run the football and we're gonna run and play and play defense. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know what? That is a key. That's a, and we're gonna keep teams off the field. Mm-hmm. And our philosophy is we're gonna run the football, and we're gonna run it down your throat. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I'm gonna, Then then you know what? Maybe trade back. Maybe get these guys and 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 the thing. But me, the way the NFL's going, it's a passing league. Mm-hmm. You gotta have guys that can score points very quickly. Mm-hmm. And I'd rather go up and try to get the best best guy possible. Mm-hmm. I, I like the, the, the receivers. Mm-hmm. I like even here, a guy like Brian uh, here, here's the thing. Thomas. And, uh, and I, know, I hear so, you. I don't mean to cut you off, Chris, but here's the thing. I hear you. It is a passing league, and this is an offensively driven league. But you also need to be able to block, right? And when you look at Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses, there's injury history, especially Tyron Smith. There's no way he's going to play a full season. Nobody can say for sure, oh, yeah, he's going to – no, he's not. Everybody talks about the deal he got. Does anybody remember why he got that deal and why he's a New York Jet? To be completely honest, is because the market wasn't what he thought it was going to be. He was demanding quite a bit of money before teams was like, bro, you haven't been right. healthy since 2015. So if he goes down this season, there right. is no answer for him at left tackle. Do not tell me that Carter Warren is going to be the New York Jets starting left tackle if Tyron Smith only plays four games because that is scary as hell. I don't want to have nothing to do with that. You don't have to have a bunch of all-star receivers to be successful when you have a Hall of Fame quarterback like Aaron Rodgers. He will lift the play. He will lift everything else. Even if we lose Garrett Wilson, he will lift the play of the offense because it's Aaron Rodgers. We'll still be solid. I do not want to not have him protected. I don't want that. And I understand you talking about wanting to grab wide receivers. I get it. But I need alignment, and I need alignment today, and especially if we're talking about the future of this team. Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses, to this point, you cannot say those guys are going to be here past this year. But I'll give you the final word before I let you go, man. All right. So, like I said, if we're going to be – my thing is that I, I believe that we're that 
in terms of the, the you're going to trade up for all. Nobody has a problem with, with Joe Alt. No Jet fan. I don't care if you Brock Bowers guy. If you, I mean, I think Joe Alt is the guy that that you that you. I'm against trading down because the the second best line is is Olu Fushana. You know what I'm saying? That's the second best guy in, in this defense. Uh, on, on. If we if we stay at at, at number um, if we stay at number ten mm-hmm. and we have to go offensive lineman, like you're saying, the two guys that you're talking about is Olu Fushano or or thing. But I think they're going to be taken before that. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing, and I, I'll and I'll leave on this point. Yeah. yeah. All the Jeff fans and all the people and all the offensive line fans, which I think he's he is going to draft the offensive line. Mm-hmm. I think Joe Douglas is going to invest another top ten pick, and I believe that's going to happen, right? But what I'm saying is that. When when Randall Cobb is, is out on the rock and Marcos Vander Scanlon is out there, right? I don't want to hear complaints. The Jets don't have weapons, and 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 and, and these guys that Aaron Rodgers are bringing in, it's not not a thing. You know, we we understand. I mean, looking at this thing, that's what's going to happen. So if we're comfortable with that, and we're going in knowing that Marcos Vander Scanlon and Randall Cobb is going to be on this team. And we know that that's going to be the other receivers run camp. Garrett Wilson, we understand that. Well, so I don't, going in there, that's it. And I listen, and, and I hear you, but I don't think that 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 you know we'll see what happens going forward. But it's here's the thing: is I think a lot of Jets fans they have this outlook on the team because of what happened last season. People forget this offense will look completely different with Aaron Rodgers at the helm of it, fully healthy. It's not going to look the same. Our weapons are not going to look. Garrett Wilson was wide open. If you anybody can go back and watch, we watched these games together, Chris. He was wide open like ninety percent of the game, most of these games. Garrett Wilson easily he had over a right. thousand yards this year, this past season. He should have easily he had over fifteen hundred yards. The reason we could not find him when he was running wide open with his hands waving in the air is because one, our offensive line couldn't block, and then we didn't have the talent at quarterback to find him. We didn't have that. Look at Conklin. Conklin had over 600 yards. Quarterback play was poop. You telling me that he can't? He's not a guy that can really get things done. I think he could with Aaron Rodgers fully healthy. I think that Jeremy Rucker's really good too. Everybody's talking about drafting another tight end. Why? Jeremy Rucker's really good. If he was utilized, these are all things. And we're not even talking about Brees Hall. I really think that this offense is much better than people think it is, or at least better than what people have in their own minds because. Aaron Rodgers didn't play last season. I think if Aaron Rodgers, again, is fully healthy this season, this this offense is going to be completely different, but you must keep him protected. Listen, Chris, I got to slide oh, off before I go. We just, we, before we I got, let you go, go ahead. We got to hold our breath. We, gotta hold, we, gotta, we mm-hmm. just got to hold our collective breath and say a prayer every time Garrett Wilson gets hit. <laughs> We'll be, be all right, Chris. We'll be all right. Listen, I got to slide off. The next time I have a show, I want to hear from you. All right, all right. Thank you. All right. You have a good one. All right, brother. Thank you. Listen, Chris calling in. I respect Chris. I respect his takes. Everyone knows I love going back and forth and having this discussion. But man, oh, man. I I need an offensive lineman. I'm not against anybody that doesn't want to take one. I, I want to hear you out. But I'm just like, and especially if I can trade down and get Fatano. Man, I don't know how you pass on that. We'll keep getting to these lines again. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. Okay, Savages, I see y'all. I'm going to come to y'all in a second, but the lines is hot, and we got Phenom on the line, and we got to talk to him. We're going to Phenom, okay? For those of you that do not know, this man Phenom, oh, he's a savage. Savage! Phenom, here we go. <laughs> As y'all, salute, y'all, salute, listen, Joe. Phenom salutes Phenom. I'm going back and forth with people tonight, and uh, man, people are angry, man. Look, Phenom, I want to. <laughs> <laughs> if the Jets are at 10, right? Let's start with that because we haven't talked with right. you in a little bit. Jets are sitting at 10. Who is the guy that you would like to see the New York Jets grab? Who's the guy at this point that you're eyeing? Oh, well. You know, this that's a multi pronged question, Joe. Um, I, I'm over, I'm in your camp. I, you know, I'm just feeling like uh, 
The protection of Aaron Rodgers is paramount. I loved what they did in the off season. Mm-hmm. It set this draft up so well. Um, they they filled some holes. It's not always it's not apparent like last year that we needed a tackle, mm-hmm. but we do. I mean, you know, because the worst nightmare for me is the Tyron Smith injury <laughs> or. Or, or and and that would that would jeopardize that. But if we draft a guy like Fatani, it, it would be perfect. But because this offseason is going so well, we have options. Mm-hmm. Now I'm not going to be mad if they trade up and get a guy like Joe Hall. Okay. You know, first two callers brought it. Chris and Chris and Justin brought it, and they they had solid they had solid stuff to say. Mm-hmm. They were on point on a lot. I'm, sh- I'm nodding and shaking my head along with them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, so all is not going to be, nobody's going to be mad if we trade up and get Joe all and we have that book and tackle, the left tackle, the, 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 the what Makai Becton was supposed to be. If we get a guy like that and he could, he could play 10 years, no Jet fan's going to say anything. Yeah. He's he's the British Shaw Ferguson. He's he's Winston Hill. Hopefully, you know, mm-hmm. a guy like that. So so that's set up. But also like like or oh, Marvin Harrison. Let me mention his name. Mm-hmm. If we trade up and get a guy like Marvin Harrison, as a Jet fan, we now have two Ohio State receivers. Mm-hmm. I'm an Ohio State Buckeye fan. Oh, it, it would be it would be a thing of beauty. It would be a thing of beauty. <sighs> Uh, but 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 we also know with with that being said, we still have to address the offensive tackle position. Yeah. So let's say we stick and pick it. So let's say we stick and pick at ten. If we get a guy like Troy Fatano from Washington, who's who's a Swiss Army knife, mm-hmm. am I going to be upset? No. But or but the also also, if we trade down, and and it's risky because now. If we can get a second round pick, that makes that first round pick. Does does it have to be a tackle? No. You know what do we do? What do we do? Joe Douglas has made some good decisions, so I'm going to trust. If he trades down, he has an idea. Oh, uh, the second round. If he can get a second round choice mm-hmm. for that t- number ten pick, then he it, 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 we 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 can now get the the, the offensive alignment yeah. and. The weapon. Yeah. No. Listen. So and, that would be the perfect case scenario. And and I so, and, and I'm. Like I'm, I said. Hey, listen. And, and I don't mean to cut you off, Leon, but I'm, I'm I'm right there with you. And that's why I like the idea of I'm, moving down to. And I know now Fatanu. A lot of people are talking about him going top ten. I, I mean, he's he's really heating up, man. I remember when there was talks about him going somewhere, you know, in the twenties and, and stuff like that. And this was that was just like two weeks ago. Okay. Now there's sure, a lot of talk about sure. him being top 10 and I get it. Cause he's, he's phenomenal. I, you know, I've seen him, but there's been sure. a lot of jets fans as well. We talk about offensive line. There's a lot of jets fans that want Bowers. And I know that you've had, you know, or you've seen those, you know, fans be very vocal about him and very vocal about bringing sure. him into, you know, this New York jets facility and being a jet. I want to get your thoughts sure. on this. What do you say phenom? to those Jets fans that say, listen, you got to draft Bowers because he comes in and he's a day one guy that's going to come in and be immediate impact for you. And that if you take an offensive lineman, that's idiotic because none of them will be your day one starters. What do you say to people uh, that say things like that? I say, I say, uh, you haven't seen Tyler Conklin and you haven't seen Jeremy Rucker then. Do you know about these guys? I have nothing against. I have nothing against Bowers. Bowers is 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 he the best tight end prospect I've ever seen? Is he, can you tell me with with you know without question that he's going to be is he going to be Sam reporter from last year? I don't know. I think we have a pretty good position, and and we have a then we have a guy like Kenny Yaboa. Mm-hmm. I mean. We got three tight ends right there. Those mm-hmm. are three pretty good players. Mm-hmm. And I think that they should have some production next year if we don't draft by Bowers. So it's not the player. The players, uh, I would, I would, that wouldn't be the move I would make. Mm-hmm. But that's just me. Uh, but this is not fantasy football either. <laughs> this is. This is NFL football. I yeah. mean, we have to live with these decisions for more than, you know, 
one season. Mm-hmm. No, listen, so, I, I, and I hear you. And like I said, I, 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 I'm right there with you. I think that Brock Bowers is a, is a phenomenal player. I think he's good, but I just. We have tight ends already. And uh, you just meant, uh, meant uh, Yaboa. There's another guy as well. I'm not going to say his name because YouTube be tripping, but from ODU that we took. And I remember Jets fans were just <laughs> screaming. <laughs> yeah, uh, they were just screaming <laughs> about this guy. And they were just raving. Oh, he's <laughs> six. He's six. Well, 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 watch it. Watch it, Phenom. YouTube be tripping. Okay. They, they, they take it somewhere else. You got to be careful. <laughs> and, uh, so, listen. They were screaming about this guy and the threat that he could be, and now it's like, hey, let's just throw him away, you know what I'm saying, and uh, let's move on and draft another tight end. Look, I get it. Bowers is a, is a good player, but I just – there's other greater needs than, than tight end, and oh. I, I just I, – I don't think that we should we should handle business that way. Now, you were talking about, you know, targeting things. Let's say the Jets do get a second-round pick. What are you looking to take in the second round, and who, is there a player that you're eyeing that you want to see the New York Jets grab in that second round? Well, it all depends. Of course, it all depends on what we do with the first round pick. Do we mm-hmm. do we draft? It, let's say we, we take a lineman. Let's say we let's say we trade down. Oh, we take we a lineman in the first. What are you doing in the second? I'm I'm looking for a weapon. I'm looking for a weapon. I'm looking for a wide receiver. Okay. And and um, I'm I'm liking Xavier Leggett from South Carolina, mm-hmm. but I'm also digging. Uh, um, I'm looking for a a player like that. Um. So I mean, this this this, this is a he- heavy a draft, heavy uh, wide receiver, heavy draft. Mm-hmm. So you can find some guys. Some guys are gonna just pop. I mm-hmm. mean, but Leggett played in the big. He played SEC football. Mm-hmm. He had a he had a monster year. He had a monster year. Mm-hmm. Um, you put and, and he seems to be able to do many things. So mm-hmm. that that's a guy I really like. Um, uh, so that's just one, but okay. but he's 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 a guy that I've been liking for a while. Okay. Uh, so yeah, no. yeah. Listen, but if we get the tackle, if we get if we get if we move if we can get Fatano, mm-hmm. if we move down, get a second round pick, get Fatano, and then get a weapon. Yeah, that would be awesome. I don't know if the, I don't think that's realistic though. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I think depending on but, but depending on who we deal with, is who we trade with. Yeah, you know? the thing is, the thing is, is uh, like I said, I, I think there, I know that there's a lot of talk about him going top ten. I feel like there's a lot of smoke and mirrors, especially with the draft coming near. We'll start to hear some crazy things. Maybe that's how it's playing out. My only concern is if the Jets trade down. The only concern would be: Do you want to trade down past the Raiders or New Orleans? I feel like those two teams will be looking for some some offensive line help. But listen, Phenom, I got to slide off because I'm short on time. I don't need blog talk hating on me. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, all right? I really like your takes, man. Thank you, Joe. All right. Always nice talking to you, Joe. Absolutely. Take care. You have a good one. Listen, we're going to take our final call, 610. We're coming directly to you, 610, okay? I'll get to the savages in just a second, okay? 610, you're looking like a new caller. Give me your name, where you're from, and give me your thoughts about the New York Jets, man. How are you feeling about Ashton Davis being re-signed? Hey, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so um, my name is Stos Moss. Uh, I've been a Jets fan for about 12, 13 years now. Okay. A lot of uh, ups and downs. But, um, you know, I'm seeing a lot of promise with this defense. I am a little uh, a little mad about losing Huff, mm-hmm. but I'm excited about Reddick in a way. I don't know if I should be though. I don't know. I wanted your opinion on whether it's a good or bad thing that we have him because like, if we if we do end up if he has a good season, mm-hmm. right? Like we expect him to. Yeah. We probably end up have to, having to sign him to what three to four years. Yeah. So maybe forty fifty million. Yeah. That that's a, that's a great take. And, and I'm correct. Your, your name is Stos. Am I correct? That's your first name. Right. Okay, I wanted yeah. to make sure that I didn't miss. My middle name's John. Okay, John, uh, I call you Stos. I have no issues. Listen, first off, thank you for calling in, yep. Stos. And this is a great question. Um, I think that it's a phenomenal uh, move that Joe Douglas made. I did not like losing Huff, though. I will say that. I really, I would have preferred that they kept Huff, especially for what he got paid. It was like $17 million, I think, a season. I wish they would have kept him. But 
Um, grabbing Riddick, you're grabbing a guy that's had double digit sacks for I think the last three or four years or something like that. Been an All Pro guy, been a Pro right. Bowler. Like he's great. The one he's year a run thing. Stopper as well, he can get you behind the line as well. Yeah, I, Sorry to interrupt you. dude, he can do it all. No, he he can do it all. The thing is, though, like you said as well, is getting that contract extension done. I think that I don't. I hope that Joe Douglas doesn't do what he did with Huff, which is let this thing play out and then try to get something done in free agency or whatever. Maybe they can utilize the franchise tag if something like that happens, but then you're really going to be paying out the wazoo. I'm hoping that they get something right. done soon. And like you said as well, the numbers are going to be up there. I know people talk about, you know, three, maybe four or 40 million or whatever. But let me tell you something. Pass rushers, especially pass rushers like like him, like Reddick, they get paid in this league. They get paid real big time deals. So, man, oh, man. Yeah, those edge rushers are no joke. No joke. And they always get paid. So, I'm hoping they get it done. Go ahead. in the linebacker position if you want to, right? He's yeah. A hybrid. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's something you can absolutely do. Um, but definitely, you know, putting that guy on that edge and having him been, I think is going to be phenomenal for the Jets defense, especially when you look at what the, you know, bringing Reddick in really relieves the pressure off of Will McDonald because once Huff was gone, people were like, Will McDonald better be the guy. Now Will can kind of ease into his second year. He can do his thing, take his yep. next step, and it won't be so much pressure because Jets fans were ready to jump on the back of Will McDonald and completely destroy him if he didn't have, you know, 15 sacks this season upcoming. Now he can, you know, I do his thing. And not only that, but he can learn as well. I'll give you the final word. No, no, I was, I was literally agreeing with you. I was trying to explain that to my buddy. He's a Jets fan as well. I'm trying to keep him on the Jets train because he's almost on the edge of giving up, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, I've done, I agree with everything you're saying. Yeah. I want to know the last thing before I head out of here. Mm -hmm. um, do you think – it's kind of like a two-part question. Do you think that Marvin Harrison drops to number 10? Ooh, I don't. I personally, I don't know. No, I, right. I don't think he will. There's yeah, no I don't think he too will. Too high of a talent, right? Oh man, he's phenomenal. But I know that think, there's a lot of the Giants steal him from us. Like, if if he does drop to us, right? Uh -huh. Is it for sure a green light? The Jets are getting him 100. percent You think? Who? Uh, who? Who would? Or do you think there's another piece that we probably need before that? Are you talking about Marvin Harrison? Yeah, because I mean, we already got Mike Williams. We got Garrett Wilson. Connect mm. that with Aaron Rodgers and Brees Hall in the backfield. I mean. I don't know how much more offense you could ask for. I mean, it's never too much, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously. Yeah, but, no, it, it's never too that much. Be the first I, thing that we'd want right now, a receiver. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. Again, Marvin Harrison. I don't think there is any way that he he makes it to ten whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I think that neighbors Harrison um, are going to be gone. Maybe Rome is going to be there at ten if the Bears don't take him. I can see the Bears taking him though, especially with them taking Caleb as well. You pair him with a, another. You pair him with a young wide receiver. Boy, oh boy, that's going to be fire. Um, but Rome is probably the most I'm likely saying. guy, but I, I don't think that, that Harrison is going to be there at all. But if he is, you're you're running to the podium to announce that he's going to be a New York Who's Jet. I feel like that's probably that what they'll do. Who was that one speedster, the youngster that broke that 40 times? Uh, I know what you're talking about. That guy from Texas, I can't remember his name, though. I can't remember his name. I'm not saying I want him, but hey, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be bad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we'll see. Listen, Stokes, I got to anyway, slide I'll, off. I'll, I got to slide off, show. man. Yeah, I love your show. I love what you're doing. Thank I'm you. just going to leave you with this. J-E-D-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Yep. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Listen, I want to thank Stokes for calling in, but we're getting short on time, and Blog Talk hates on your boy, okay? But I tell you, I don't think there's any way in the world that Marvin Harrison is going to be there at 10. I don't. I really, really don't. But I, if he's there, I don't think that Joe Douglas would pass on him. Even though I want an offensive lineman, I don't think there's a way. I don't think that there's any way that Joe Douglas would pass on him at all. I, I don't. Even though I don't want it, I don't think that Joe Douglas would do it whatsoever. So I got to close the show out. Salutes to all of the savages in the chat, okay? Let me tell you, let me tell you. Wait, Dano, let me get to him, says, let me ask you, LBJ, if our window is as wide as we keep this team together, isn't it smarter to slide and take – two starters uh, stuck in their fourth year rookie deals than it is to trade up and take one elite guy. Yeah, listen, the more draft capital that you can grab, Dane, I'm right there with you. Moving down, grabbing a young, you know, offensive lineman that can come in. Like I said, Fatanu is, is my guy. Grabbing him, bringing in him, him into the building and grabbing another, you know, wide receiver in the second or wherever you get it is going to be good to go. 
okay? Going to be good to go. So I'm right there with you, all right? So salute to all the savages. We're going to close out the show now quickly because Blog Talk is going to be hating. Listen, I'm the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me say we promote my Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, search The Long Beach Show Show. Like that page. My content is up there. Go ahead seconds. and give a listen. Message me. I'll message you right back. I love going back and forth with you folks about this football team. Also, leave me some feedback. I love hearing about what you folks think I do here on The Long Beach Joe Show. I'm also on Twitter as well. Going over to Twitter, type in at The Long Beach Joe, at The Long Beach Joe on Twitter. Follow you, boy. I'll follow you right back. You're troll me. No issues. I'm the troll that lives under the bridge, and I will have my Vera Tucker jersey on at all times. At all times, okay? It's SC, fight on, okay? So if you want to troll me, let's go, all right? I'm also on YouTube as well. Come on over to YouTube. Type in Long Beach Joe Jets. Long Beach Joe Jets on YouTube, all right? Subscribe, hit that notification bell. So when I post content, you'll be in the know. Also, if you want to troll me, go ahead and get in those comments and troll me, and I'll troll you right back. And as always, people, when you see me in person, it is arms out, chest open, free hugs for everyone, okay? Free hugs for everyone. I'm going to thank everyone that calls in, that interacts with your boy any way that you do. I appreciate every single one of y'all. Without y'all, I'm absolutely nothing. Thank you for taking the times out of your day to kick it with your boy and call in. So until the next show, folks, you folks have a good one. Peace. One second, folks. Bang. I should be back. Listen. Salutes to everybody. Okay, we got to do this quickly because I got to get up out of here, y'all. Exclamation point links is in the chat, okay? That links. Salutes, Kareem Mitchell. I see you. He says, I, uh, we appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining us. That link tree that's in the chat right now, that link tree is the links to all of my social media. Also, is the links to all of my YouTube pages. For those of you that do not know, I do reaction videos. We do all kinds of stuff. And there's more content coming. My schedule is just wild, okay? Now, reaction video, I put one up today. Go check it out. We laugh at fools on the internet, okay? <laughs> That's what I'll be doing on that reaction channel. We have a lot of fun. We explore the internet. Come on and join your boy. And if there's something you want to see me react to, excuse me, put that in the comments, okay? All right? And I'll, and I'll, I'll do what I can, okay? Um, and, I'll, and I'll get that out there. But more reaction uh, videos coming on the way. A lot of fun. Um... Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed already. All right. Also, uh, hit that notification bell. When I post content, you'll be in the know. Please give the stream, the video, a thumbs up as well if you can. Or please do that. It's free. Okay. If you had a great day, give the video a thumbs up. If you can move your head side to side, give the video a thumbs up. If you're breathing, take a deep breath and give the video a thumbs up. All right. Give the video a thumbs up. Okay. Uh, so please do that. Also, share the stream. Uh, with your uh, friends and your family across your social media, okay? And I appreciate everyone that does that. Now, this call-in show, for those of you that are new, this call-in show, we do this show year-round. The next show I'm going to do is going to be Tuesday, okay? Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. I'll be doing a live show, okay? Now, here's the deal. Generally, when I do a, my live show, uh, I talk for about maybe 10, 15 minutes, and then we go straight to the lines, Okay? All of my veteran guys, they know that. Listen, okay, just wait 10, 15 minutes. Sometimes I talk, sometimes we have, uh, um, you know, uh, guests come on, you know, scouts and players and, uh, you know, beat writers. We have those sometimes, like 10, 15 minutes, right? And then after that, I go directly to the lines, okay? For those of you that are new, all right, I can physically see you. I have a cue system, okay? This number right here, is the number to that's the number to the show <laughs> i'm sorry i had a person ask me joe but where your numbers I, I don't know how to call in your number's nowhere and i was like there's no way you could miss that this number <laughs> below me i don't it, th this is not the lottery numbers okay it's good <laughs> somebody uh, anyway so this number is the number to the show, okay? That's the number to the show. That's how you call in. When you call in, I can physically see you, okay? So if you just wait and you're patient, I get right to you. Y'all heard it tonight, right? If I know you by name, I'm going to say your name, okay? And when I come to you, be prepared, okay? Because I'm, I'm going to let you know I'm coming to you. If I don't know your name, I'm going to say your area code. As we heard tonight, 
uh, you know, our recent new caller knows his area code. There have been people in the past, and I'll never say who it is, okay? <laughs> There's been a person in the past that was very upset with me. They thought that I blocked them. They thought that I was trying to stay away from having them on the show. And I said, no, I call out your area code multiple times, and you don't know, like, you don't pick up. And the person said, well, what area code? And I looked it up. I said, this is your area code, right? He said, the person said, oh, I, I, I looked it up. I said, this is where you live, isn't it? That's the city, right? And the person said, yeah. I said, then that's your area code. And the person was like, oh, I didn't know. I said, well, how do you, that's your area code. So when I call out your area code, then you pick up, okay? If you don't do that, then there's nothing I can do, okay? I'll move on. So please know what your area code is, okay, when you call in. Because that if I don't know you by name, that's how I'm going uh, to uh, um, let you know, hey, I'm coming to you. Let's go. Let's talk Jets, all right? Now, here's the deal. When you call in, please make sure you have a good phone line. If your phone line sounds crazy, okay, if a lot of background noise, cra I will move on. Don't call in with a bad phone that you found in a dumpster Home Depot. Don't do that, all right? Also, again, when you call in, that background noise got to be gone. I know people call in and they're at their job. Some people call in when they, you know, moving around. I get it. And I, and I, I love that, you know, that y'all listen to me when you're at your job and all that other stuff. But if the background noise is crazy, if you're on the construction job with your jackhammer, put the jackhammer down, go down the street, and then talk to your boy, okay? And then get back to the jackhammer. You know what I'm saying? Get back to making your money. I get it, all right? Now... <laughs> With that being said, I want to put this out there, okay? I'm not going to tell you <laughs> who's doing it. But this number right here, okay? My radio show starts at 7 p.m. Eastern. Again, we'll be live Tuesday, okay? Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. My show starts at 7 p.m. Eastern, but the lines to my show, the phone lines open at like 6.50 p.m. Eastern from what I know. There's people that say it opens up before that. I don't know. But 6.50 p.m. Eastern, from what I know, is when the lines open. So what a lot of veteran callers do is they'll call in at 6.50. They'll wait about 10 minutes, right, till the show starts. I'll talk for about 10 minutes, cover the topics very quickly, and then I go straight to the lines, all right? So, <laughs> Dano, I'm a <laughs> salutes. I'll come to you in a second. So, what a lot of people do is they'll wait the, the 650, they'll wait the 10 minutes, and then they'll wait the 10 minutes for me just quickly covering the topics, and then they get on the show. Again, I go down my queue system. That's how I, I just go to my callers. Again, my wait times are not long. I give I try to give people at least five to eight minutes to, to have that discussion. And I always give my callers the last word because I want to hear from you. Okay. So here's the deal. I'm not telling you who's doing it. It's Val and Rusty. <laughs> Val and Rusty are doing it, but I'm not telling you who's doing it, okay? If you want to call in early, you can do that. It's completely legal. Just wait. The show starts. I talk for about 10 minutes, and then we get straight to the phone lines, okay? The only rule I have on my show is don't come on my show cursing. I'll get you out of here so fast if you come on my show cursing like crazy. Don't do that, okay? I generally give people warnings if they get a little... If they get wild, okay, I'll give you a warning. Hey, knock that off. The reason is because this is YouTube, okay? YouTube is very sensitive, and I love YouTube, okay? It's my platform. And also, this is a family-friendly show, okay? I have young people that listen to me, and I have old people that listen to me. Respect my platform. Don't come on here crazy, cursing crazy. And again, I know I don't have to tell, you know, my audience here, you know, the, the, the people, my listeners. I know I don't have to tell y'all this because y'all already know. I'm just putting this out there, you know, for people that maybe this is their first time seeing me, okay? I'm just putting it out there. Do not call into my show cursing crazy because I will move on from you. And, you know, the savages know. I don't like to do it, but I will hang up on you. I've hung up on many people that did not want to respect that, okay? I generally give warnings, but again, if it's egregious, I'm not giving you a warning. I'll just get you right up on out of here and move on to the next person. I'm not having that, okay? So that's like the only rule. You can call in. And you can completely disagree with me. I want to hear you out. We have people that are not Jets fans that call into this show, especially throughout the year, all the time. 
Some of them call in and bash the Jets. Don't get too crazy. But I'll allow it. If you got something crazy you want to say, hey, I'm listening. But you call in here cursing and I'll snatch you up out of here so fast, it'll be crazy. Kareem Mitchell, salutes. Thank you for subscribing. And again, I want to thank all my new subscribers. Salutes. Please keep subscribing. All right. And again, we will be live Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Okay. 7 p.m. Eastern. We'll be talking draft. All right. Uh, again, this is year round show. So during the season, when my schedule allows, we watch games together. Okay. Right here on this channel live. And then directly after the game, we have a live radio show. <laughs> and those are fun. Okay. Uh, they weren't so fun when the Jets were losing last season. Those are some hot shows. Whew. <laughs> Those are some hot shows. Okay. Uh, a lot of people angry. All right. So uh, please, again, join your boy. And also sometimes I game on this channel. So you might catch me playing Street Fighter. And so whenever I have a time, I'll start doing that again when I have the time. But my schedule is wild. All right. So, uh, yeah, get involved with your boy. Uh, any way that you can, again, subscribe, hit that notification bell, give the stream videos a thumbs up. Um, I put out content as well. But again, we'll be live doing a live radio show Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's the next live radio show. All right. And if you want to bash blog talk during my shows, feel free. OK, I'm not stopping you. All right. I know people are going to bash uh, next week. So it is what it is. All right. But this is the number to the show. And we have a lot of fun here, so please get involved with what we do. All right. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of fun here, man. Have a lot, a lot of fun. We're gonna be doing uh we'll work on like the draft specials and stuff like that. I know a lot of people want to do um mock draft stuff. I'll be working on a date from that and date for that, and then um I'll get to y'all and 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 talk to y'all about that. <laughs> Rusty says, it's a witch hunt full of allegations against Val and I because we are the truth. <laughs> and the Ohio State Buckeyes who own the Big Ten, Joe just be hating again. <laughs> I'm sh I hope, I I'm sure we're going to hear from Val as well next week. Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, I hope to hear from him. <laughs> Th this talk... Rusty and Val and allegations. Blog talk actually worked tonight, so this can be easily proven. <laughs> easily. I'm just saying, if y'all want to take it, if you want to take it to court, <laughs> please do. Please do, okay? Just know there will be a countersuit, all right? I need, I need money. <laughs> the salutes to Val and Rusty. Again, it's not illegal. I welcome it, okay? I welcome it. I think it's really cool. Again, I want to have this discussion. Kareem Mitchell says, uh, will you be on draft night? Oh, yes. As of now, yes. We will be doing a draft show, okay, first night. And I'm thinking we'll do a radio show after the draft or after the 10th pick at least. I'll do a live radio show where y'all can call in and talk about. But as of now, so as of my schedule, as of now, yes. But, you know, as things get closer, we'll definitely um, have that discussion. But as of now, Yes, we will be doing a live draft. We'll be doing a live show during the draft and having discussions about the pick. So uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, if my schedule changes, y'all will know because I will tell you. <laughs> but as of now, yes. And again, we will be live Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern talking about the draft and getting our um, draft predictions out. So please come with that and be ready. All right. No cursing. All right. Rusty says, I was not first tonight. Check the record, fam. I got receipts. Okay, Rusty. <laughs> Y'all, but man, Block Talk was working. Okay. <laughs> Block Talk works. That's all I'm going to say. Dano says, I'm, I'm from the abandoned Jackhammer Foundation, and I object. <laughs> Salutes to you. Salutes to everybody, man, that called in, all the savages in the chat. Also, for those of you that are in the chat, I come to y'all and I do get your thoughts and questions. But again, we got callers as well, but I bounce between the callers and the savages in the chat. So if you have questions, thoughts, whatever, put them in the chat. Also, you know, people, y'all see the savages in the chat. We interact here. We talk. If you, you know, if they disagree, people disagree, they're going to let you know. Go back and forth. You know what I'm saying? I welcome that. All right. Salutes to Rusty. 
Always good to see you in the building. Kareem Mitchell, salutes and respect to you as well. Good to see you in here. Dano, salutes as well. Good to see you in here, man. Uh, salutes to everybody, man, that came and joined your boy, Sean Bennett. Salutes and respect to you. Always good to see you in here, man. Always good to see everybody, man, that comes on by. Bree, always good to see you in the building. Um, you know, every every time I do this show, man, I really, really enjoy interacting with y'all. Dakota J, always good to see you. Michael, salutes to you. <laughs> uh, Eddie, Eddie Ralph, always good to see you in the building. Um, salutes. Kareem Mitchell says, abandon jackhammer, please explain. Oh, well, so I tell people, you know, because we've had people in the, I've had people in the past, everybody, like people listen to me from their jobs. And I, and I, again, I, I really appreciate that. You get money and you want to hear your boy Joe live, man, I love it. But we've had people call in and they were literally working, hammering stuff, construction workers, <laughs> guys driving forklifts, dry, guys on their jackhammers. You got, listen, man, I can't hear you, okay? Neither can my audience. If we can't hear your takes, I understand you on your jackhammer. Put it down. <laughs> Go down the street, <laughs> talk to me, and then come back. So that's why he said the abandoned jackhammer club. He throws that jackhammer down. Comes and talks and then comes back. That's where that comes from. All right. So I want to thank everybody for joining your boy Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to say it again because I've had people go, Joe, you didn't tell me. Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's the next show. All right. A lot of fun. Okay. And this is the this is the number for those of you that don't know that this is the number to the show. That's how you call in, okay? When you call in, just be patient. I can physically see you, okay? You'll hear me talking, and I can see you. I know you're on the line, and I'll come to you, okay? My whole times are not long, all right? I got to get out of here, folks. Listen, be safe, okay? Be safe, people. A lot of, lot of crazy things going on in this world. Don't ask me why. I don't know why they're happening, but they're happening. Be safe out here, all right? Sit down with your friends and your family. Eat some good food. Make some good meals. Let the people that you love know that you love them, okay? It's important to me in my life. I hope it's important to you in yours, all right? So until the next show, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, that's where we'll be live again, talking Jets, all right? Talking draft. Until that show, 